Okay. Okay, it's good. We're all live. Um, let's take a look. Okay, so, all right, so the very first thing that I need to do is I just need you to somehow promote me to Game Master so okay. I can see the... Sure. Yeah, so I can see <laughs> see the hidden information for casting purposes, of course. Okay. To be honest, I never changed it before. Oh, it's actually pretty strange. I'm not being, I, I, I'm not getting any game master privileges so far. I mean, it's it's kind of strange. I I think you probably have to manually click my name in the top right corner and then just give me game master Pro pri privileges. To be honest, I just promoted you, and it's. No, I don't did. know if I can do something. You did, but I think the mm. thing is, like, I think that if you just click on my tab, you should be able, like, the tab, you should be able to change my color to Game Master or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably... Okay, I see. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, that's excellent. That's excellent. So, just going to get these ones out of the way, and let me take a look and see what else is needed. Okay, so... What about this auto save? Hmm... Yeah, I think this should be fine. I think that now that we're now that you're done, I, um, yeah, I think it's probably best just to move over to game room number two because I have a, I am recording this live. So all right, all already then. Uh, okay then. Okay, so have fun, guys. Spectating already this. Then. Yeah, you too. You too. I look forward uh, to uh, casting the game. I look forward to casting. <laughs> <the game. laughs> uh, okay. Hello, Alex. By the way. <laughs> okay. Hello. See you guys Hello. later. Indeed, yep. indeed. Actually. All right, so Good evening, afternoon, morning, or wherever the heck you come from. Uh, today will be our third game in the round of 16 of the second Forbidden Stars <clears throat> tournament. In the bottom right corner, we have Mies Malt, who is who definitely who definitely seems like as if he has a reputation for being a, a, a reasonably good player, you know? Like, I mean, I mean, I'm not exactly sure if I would necessarily consider Mies Malt necessarily super duper high tier, but he's definitely, but he's definitely known for making some reasonably respectable plays. Now, Pharrell, on the other hand, he's kind of stuck. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but it seems like as if maybe Pharrell needs to choose a color in order to begin, although, hold on, I think I might have to go, just drop back, hold on, um, uh, okay, so, hold on, let me take a look at this. It's value then... Okay, so, uh, Pharrell, I think that you probably just have to choose a color, I don't think white is a legitimate color, you have to choose... Mm, yeah, yeah, just one moment, you know, we'll roll for... Okay, uh, if you like, you can make a roll. Uh, no, for... Okay, sure. Cool. Okay, so with those technicalities out of the way, it seems like his Mies Malt has just rolled a four for <laughs> to determine faction selection. Okay, and then it seems like his Pharrell is going to pick up the next die. So, let's take a look and see what Pharrell is planning on doing. Oh, or maybe we're probably just using the other system. But hold on, let's take a look and see what's going on. Hmm, it's kind of strange. It's kind of strange. Hmm. Okay, so Pharrell is in fact chucking the die, and Pharrell is getting an 11. So let's take a look and see what Pharrell is picking as his first pick among the four accepted factions. Which one shall it be? Thank you. 
Okay, so it seems like Yusufa Rao has picked Space Marines as his starting <coughs> as a starting faction, and Mies Mal. No, 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 no. Sorry, my bad. So Farrow has picked Chaos as a starting faction, and then Mies Malt has picked Space Marines as his own starting faction. Hmm, I'm actually kind of surprised that maybe Mies Malt <laughs> that Mies Malt hadn't picked either Eldar or Orcs, considering how Orcs and Eldar usually have some favorable advantage against Chaos. But well, let's take a look and see what who goes first. All right, so Farrow rolls <laughs> rolls just a one, and um. Hmm, that's kind of strange. I think that maybe I should probably just get a bit more information on who gets to draw first. Okay, so both of them are just are taking their initial starting home systems. Farrow definitely seems to be uh, be kind of lucky. I mean, I really, really, really like this system as one of my starting home systems because double cash tokens early on is just obviously just too good to ignore, right? So that's basically how, um, yeah, and this system over here, hmm, yeah, he definitely has the one skull system with the, <clears throat> with the reinforcement and the wild icon, so that definitely seems like as if it could be worthwhile, but we're gonna have to take a look and see what Pharrell plans on doing when it comes to map setup. Okay, so it seems like as if Pharrell is going first in terms of Oh no, they're just giving each other their starting objectives. Okay, and let's take a look and see what's going on. Seems as if... Okay, so Farrow is deploying first. He's placing the 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 space marine objective on the one pop planet. <laughs> on the one pop, pop planet, placing <laughs> while placing yet another cultist on that same planet. On... The same planet. I'm actually a little bit surprised that he probably that he didn't that Farrow didn't really place another chaos another cultist on the other planet. But maybe he's just conserving his forces for later. Perhaps he's just using this as a choke point in order to to maybe prevent the Space Marines from from swarming the center of the map which is definitely a which is definitely a strategy that i've seen proficient space marine players do right because space marines among all the four base factions generally tend to be the less the least mobile so there's definitely that okay so let's take a look and see what these malt plans i'm doing so space marines are placing a a strike cruiser and let's see what else he's doing so he's going to be taking a space marine on the two map planet and a scout. Oh, he's placing two miniatures on a two pop on a two map planet. Now, this is definitely an interesting setup. I mean, usually whenever people place objectives, they'll they'll probably just distribute the and their units among two systems, but it seems like as if Mies Malt is just going for a different deploy. It, it seems like as if maybe Mies Malt is probably going for a separate deploy. Okay, so then Farrow responds in turn by placing the Chaos Homeworld system, and he's going to go for a, for a factory second onto onto the four pop planet as well as a space marine objective on the one map planet and let's take a look and see what the distribution of units will look like yeah so it seems like as if maybe for Rao is just going for a standard macro opener um <clears throat> is just going for a standard macro opener by deploying along a line i usually like calling this the conga line deployment and one of the reasons why this tends to be a reason this tends to be a relatively safe opener, especially as the first player, is by doing this, you're controlling map setup. So, and by placing your factory second on a home tile on your home system over here, you get a good macro oriented build in order to do this. So, it seems like as if for Rao is. is just leaving his Chaos Space Marines for the second map tile because. I mean, in this case, he could just simply deploy, and usually when you're deploying within a, <laughs> you're, you're doing a conga line, line deployment as a first player, you're probably going to deploy a unit over here anyhow, in order to bolster your forces or anything of that sort, right? So, okay, so let's take a look and see how Mies Malt will respond. So, 
looks like it's just me small might probably go for might probably place home home system second along the center in order to to gain a foothold near the center although i'm not exactly sure if he's probably going to be placing any factories there anytime soon it is a possibility but usually i recommend against placing the factory in the center because it's just it's just too vulnerable to too many forcing moves or maybe these malt is considering system 8a instead oh no oh okay now this is mm -hmm. yeah so it seems like as if Mies malt is deliberating between either between either of these two spots or maybe perhaps in the center but I have to take a look and see what goes on. Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, I guess maybe if I were Space Marines, maybe deploying map tile, maybe deploying that map tile second over here could have actually been an okay choice, so long as if you don't put the factory down. But it seems like as if Mies Malt is probably considering on a macro oriented build, or oh, or it seems like okay, okay, that definitely seems like an interesting second tile deployment, but I'm not exactly sure what he's planning on doing it here. Is he planning on maybe just leaving factories in that way, or does he want to go with double voids? Hmm, definitely seems pretty interesting, although I will... I will say that maybe deploying the second map, deploying the home system map tile in the center, and then placing some scouts on those systems may not necessarily be a bad idea. Okay, well, it seems like as if Mies... Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, it definitely seems to be the case. So, um, let's take a look. It seems like as if Mies Malt is just deliberating between these two options. Okay, so it seems like as if Mies Malt has finally made his decision by getting... by placing his factory on the opposite side of on the opposite corner of the galaxy of the sector. So let's take a look. Or maybe he's still thinking about it. He's still deliberating. Okay, so in place of the home system, it looks like as if maybe he's planning on just deploying two scouts over there. Well, this is definitely a somewhat interesting deployment. I'm actually a little bit surprised that that Mies Malt hasn't hadn't put an additional scout or maybe huh, okay, well it definitely seems like as if he's deliberating. Maybe he just wants more land tiles, maybe he's getting more space tiles, although uh, I'm not exactly sure if this position is exactly the most defensible because the thing is Chaos does have a long-term fleet advantage against Space Marines, so this seems a little bit iffy, although maybe what Pharrell is trying to do is that maybe by doing this, Pharrell, it puts Pharrell into an interesting situation. He probably might just claim the center, and then in response, Mies Malt will have to deploy the factory on the... on his home system. So that does appear to be what Farrow is doing, although I am a little bit skeptical. Yeah, I honestly find that this map deployment, it's a little bit, uh, I, I'm a little bit skeptical of this because the problem is like because Farrow has two Chaos Space Marines, he could very easily use an advanced order in order to get, <clears throat> in order to claim this tile over here. And given that Mies Malt lacks any type of defensive structures or anything of that sort, it seems like as if Pharrell could easily take his first objective over here and then maybe subsequently take his second objective over there. But at the same time, keep in mind that Pharrell is in fact going first, so there could so assuming that Mies Malt plays reasonably well, I do think that Mies Malt might probably just use his strike cruiser and then just place it over here just to block Pharrell from from entering that system. Okay, so it looks like as if what Mies Malt is trying to do is he's trying to establish a barrier between between Farrell's factory units and 
his own factory. Although, even then, I'm not exactly sure if this is the best idea, because the problem is, one of the... one I, I can definitely see one opener that might make this a little bit scuffed. <laughs> a little bit scuffed, or a little bit, um... Or, no, or a little bit suboptimal, because the thing is, if a Rao does a, d performs a Dominate, then he can basically use his his Taint of Chaos ability in order to block a 2 material spot. And as soon as you block the 2 material spot, he for Rao could, could start accumulating an advantage against... And start accumulating an advantage against Mies Malt. The other angle of vulnerability that I can definitely see in this play is... Are the two Chaos Space Marines? I think for Rao's initial map setup of just leaving the two Chaos Marines until the very end, that was actually kind of clever on his part because now he can actually either threaten this, uh, this, uh, this system over here, or he could also threaten the the Space Marine sector over here. Either way, it doesn't seem to bode well. And the other problem you also have to understand is that when you're in a is if your factory system has two planets exposed, you don't want it. It, 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 it can be a little bit tricky to defend because the problem is if you try to mix all, if you place all your units onto one planet, your opponent will just attack the other. If you try to spread out your units, you probably won't either. You probably won't even defend either one of them too well anyway. So, yeah. So far this. This is a bit of a questionable setup, but I guess we have to take a look and see what the order token placements will be. Okay, so it appears that Farrow is placing a dominant order token on the very bottom of his system tile stack, and as a result, he's probably, hmm, yeah, he probably plans on maybe just jumping some cultists around the map, so Space Marines in turn respond with yet another dominate, which I think is a pretty fair option. I mean, at the very least, the dominate option does allow to it does allow Mies Malt to upgrade his units up to a land raider, of course, by by one step, as I would call it. All right, so um, for Rao, looks like as if he's going for another dominate in the center of the map, perhaps just to get more, perhaps just to boost a bit more economy. So Mies Malt looks like as if he is considering on using an advanced order some way in some way shape or form we're gonna have to take a look and see what advanced order might possibly do i mean given that Farrow has two dominate orders and given that space marines has a <laughs> has a dominate over here i'm not exactly sure what he might plan on doing i mean there's definitely a possibility that maybe he might choose an advanced order and then just nab his first objective over here given how lightly defended this place might this place is right i mean he could definitely move his ship over here into the bottom center and then maybe shuffle in some space marines and some scouts in order to take over this planet but we're gonna have to take a look and see what happens okay so it seems like as if what he's trying to do is he's probably just is i think the space marines are probably just going to go for a for a straight up macro build while the warp storm lasts for sure although even then, I do think it's a. Uh, I wonder if that's if that w is necessarily the right idea. Okay, so Pharrell is obviously probably going to go for an advance, which is not too surprising, especially considering how lightly defended this planet is. I mean, Pharrell has basically six dice worth of units in the center, so I could definitely see that as a plausible play. Okay, so Mies Malt, as I suspect, is definitely aiming for the Space Marine objective in the very center. So let's take a look and see what what Farrell is going to do. I mean, anytime whenever you have an order token in an area that doesn't contain any of your units, you can you're, you're signaling pretty hard, assuming that you're that you want to actually win the game, of course. So yeah, it seems like as if maybe Farrow knows exactly what's in the center. He was deliberating on maybe using a, an advance order in order to take to maybe reinforce the front by by I don't know, maybe blocking the voids. Although 
it doesn't, although this position over here just doesn't really seem all that defensible. And it doesn't seem like as if, hmm. So I'm not exactly sure what, what Pharrell plans on doing in this case. There is a possibility that Pharrell is going to choose an advance order, although it seems like, but again, this is a little bit uh, sketchy because the problem is, okay, okay, so it seems like as if Pharrell does in fact want to go for an advance order, but let's see where he goes. In order to do that, I mean, this is a little bit sketchy. I mean, the problem is, um, okay, so it seems like as if a Rao probably just wants to crush, probably just wants to take the Space Marine factory over here. Although, I'm not exactly sure if splitting his forces in the center between this place, <laughs> between top left and top right, is necessarily the best idea. But I guess we'll have to take a look. I mean, obviously, I, I mean, it's it's for Rao, you know. He he's known for making good plays. I mean, on the I guess on the other hand, he could probably reveal a dominate first, and by revealing a dominate first, he could jump his cultist to this system, and then maybe just have a somewhat more even fight against the scout. But I mean, the scout is rather. Yeah, I think that scout is basically kind of doomed at this point. There's not really much. Could do, or maybe, or hold on. Let me take a look and think about the the deployment options. That oh no, actually, I do think that he is actually kind of screwed because the problem is if he jumps the cultist over here and then he jumps it onto the four onto the one map planet on top right, he could form a land bridge and then using the land bridge, he could in fact use it to swarm the <clears throat> the factory. And honestly, and the thing is, having your factory knocked out on turn one definitely seems a bit tricky <laughs> definitely does seem a little bit uh uh definitely does seem at least a little bit uh definitely does seem like a poor play on on his part but it seems like as if maybe Mies Malt is just trying to block this order token in order to maybe prevent some some things from happening but okay so then Pharrell opens up with a dominate acquiring a cash token and a reinforcement token Mies Malt decides to reveal a dominate order getting a cash token and let's take a look and see if he upgrades any one of his units Okay, so it definitely looks like as if maybe he's considering. Hmm, which one would he upgrade? I mean, I guess right. I, I guess as of now, I would probably upgrade the scout into the space marine simply because early on, there's a lot of space marines don't really have too many um <laughs> um orders that could possibly uh, too many combat procs that could possibly trigger using a land raider so it does appear that he is in fact going to get a space marine for his dominate order Alrighty then so for Rao, let's take a look and see what for Rao does in response hmm well, that's actually a little bit strange Okay, so Pharrell decides to use an advance order, which is pretty... which is expected. I think that among the two advance orders that he has face down, this definitely appears to be the better option. Although, I'm not exactly sure what he's planning on doing. I There's definitely a... okay, so he's moving a Chaos Marine onto the three material planet perhaps just to earn a bit more income because and i i don't think that's necessarily a bad option because the thing is if you try to go for your objective right away that could pro compromise your potential future position as uh, as it's known and go by the term aji right like aji is basically like your future potential position and i think maybe this is probably the most sense the more sensible play as opposed to just simply piling onto the objective right away so yeah it seems like it is a okay so Mies Malt is definitely considering on moving on scooching Billy the Billy Bob the Space Marine against Jimmy Jimmy has returned once again 
to possibly be smacked around by <coughs> by any other unit that's not a cultist. So let's but let's take a look and see how little Jimmy fares this battle. Okay, so in fact Jimmy, so so in fact Billy Bob does want to contest the. Oh wait, oh so is he going to bring in two Space Marines as opposed to one Space Marine? I'm not exactly sure if this is necessarily the best option. I mean. He's in a bit of a pickle, so it seems like as if now we have our very first duel of Yu-Gi-Oh between two <clears throat> between our two contestants. So for Rao, we'll be rolling one die for his cultist and and these small two for the Space Marines, and we're gonna have to take a look and see what for Rao draws. Okay, so he actually has a reasonably, he, he actually has a really good spread of cards, but let's take a look and see if for Rao decides to, to use his reinforcement token in order to bolster his defenses, or in order just to, or just so he doesn't lose completely. I mean, it seems like as if Pharrell is thinking about it, or maybe he doesn't want to use the reinforcement token as of yet. So, um, hmm, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to take- okay, so Pharrell does in fact use his reinforcement token, which I think is a sensible decision, for sure, no doubt. And let's take a look and see where he- what he plans on doing. Seems like as if maybe, hmm, yeah, it seems like as if he's definitely looking at Lure of Chaos right now, whereas Space Marines is looking at either, seems like as if Space Marines is considering Reconnaissance. I mean, I definitely do think that Recon is a good, is a pretty good card, especially as a, especially as an attacker early on. So then Space Marines flips over Re Recon, which allows... Space Marines in order to to look at the face down card, and it definitely looks like, and it definitely appears as if, as if, um, yeah. Well, I guess in this case, maybe choosing two bulk guns is not necessarily a bad idea. Although the because the thing is, if Lear, if Chaos chooses two bulk guns in exchange, they'll Chaos will have a total of three bulk guns against Space Marines one defense, but. Whereas Space Marines will be able to at least kill or eliminate one cultist, although I'm not exactly sure if that's what, what he wants to do. So it seems like as if Mies Malt is obviously deliberating between either two bulk guns or two defense, but of course he also knows that Leader of Chaos will... that using Leader of Chaos it's possible to counterpick using Leader of Chaos. So, I don't know, maybe he might want to go with two bulk guns, but then if he goes with two bulk guns... Well, actually, maybe two bulk guns is probably the better choice in this case because if he gets two bulk guns and then and then chaos chooses two defense in response, the two bulk guns and the two defense cancel each other out. But space marines get to deal one damage, and chaos doesn't have to do that. Oh, okay. So the thing is, like, okay, so I think that Pharrell is probably just reminding him that he needs to resolve his cards first because he's the attacker. So. Yeah, seems like as if maybe two Balkans is probably the better choice in this area, simply because, regardless of what Pharrell picks, he'll have to get something else. But it seems like as if Pharrell is using Leader of Chaos, and then he's getting getting one additional die in place of um. Hmm. Let's take a look at this choose and route one of his units to gain one die. Okay, so the thing is, like, he's actually gaining one die by routing the space marine, which is sensible. Okay, so then the two bulk guns cancel out with the two defense, but space marines inflict four damage against the zero d uh, against, um, no, sorry, two damage against the cultist. So the now cultists have, so the now Pharrell has gotten rid of his reinforcement tokens. So as of now, Space Marines are still inflicting two points of damage upon the cultist, and if he doesn't and if Pharrell doesn't really close the distance in terms of the, the gap, he's probably gonna go away. So if you take a look at this, so then Space Marines obviously plays the second recon, which is not terribly surprising. I mean any type of card that allows you to win rock, paper, scissors in this game is usually a good card. So 
not too much surprise there. Okay, so right now it looks like as if there's a total of four bulk guns, and then Farrow has Foul Worship. He rolls another bulk gun, which is not exactly what he wants at this point, but because he's gaining one defense, he gets that. Alright, so it looks like as if Space Marines have enough damage to push through, so Space Marines do in fact conquer this area, and do, 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 do in fact take the objective over here, which is, honestly, it's not the worst possible loss. It could be a hundred times worse in terms of what might happen, what could, what, in terms of what could potentially happen, right? But now Farrow is forced to remove, to, 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 to move this, to move this advanced order token, and unfortunately, looks a little bit awkward, although... I mean, I guess simply plopping a Chaos Marine on top of Planet 1, on top of the f the one-map planet, is, it seems like a pretty reasonable deal. Okay, so Space Marines have the option of doing either one of them, and then it seems like as if what Nice Malt is planning on doing is that he's planning on using a deploy order. Yeah, I'm I'm honestly a little bit su su surprised that 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 Farrow would make a couple of strategic misplays on turn 1. I mean, I usually like to either strategize or deploy on turn 1 simply because just having more dudes on the map is usually it just gives you more leverage overall. Although and and not only that, but by deploying on the first turn when it's relatively safe to do so. You can also get your first city, and by placing your first city on a cultist, you're technically both improving your upgrade options while <laughs> while preventing <clears throat> while potentially developing any pieces that are on the city space, right? But okay, so it seems like as if Mies Mald is just spawning has spawned two scouts. Hmm, yeah, it definitely seems like a bit of a misplay, and then there's definitely, I definitely, uh, I suspect that afterwards, Mies Malt will probably reveal his second order token, and then using the second order token, which is basically in advance, the Strike Cruiser could probably just go over, just go right over here, and then just block for Rao for making any more ships, at least using this sector. I mean, there is definitely the possibility that Chaos could just simply, that Chaos next turn could probably do an advanced smother on top of top right in order to take over the factory. But it seems like as if Mies Malt probably wants a third scout, so in that case he can at least achieve dice, uh, die parity with for Rao. Hmm. Well, okay, so Pharrell obviously can't go again because he's already smothered, so Mies Malt reveals an advanced order token, which is, and let's take a look and see what he plans on doing. There's a chance that he could just simply maybe move his strike cruiser into the void area and then just bombard the cult, and then have a chance of bombarding the cultists, but that's only a 25% of success, although... Although, even just simply denying him his void area is probably worth it. Okay, so it seems like as if Mies Mall will just probably just take the advanced order token and just place it on top of the event deck. Pharrell, on the other hand, is going to choose Dominate. He's going to get both a cash token and a forge token. Let's take a look what he's planning on doing. I mean, he could probably jump over here, but this is a somewhat, but this is a relatively weak move. Or he could jump to the system controlled by by the Chaos Marine. Although he would be giving up an, an income of one material at the end of the turn. As of now, okay, so it seems like as if maybe he's not going to do it. Maybe he's probably just going to leave the cultist. So, okay, so he just jumps the cultist to this planet over, to to the center of the map. That's definitely an interesting uh, pick. I mean, double dominate with double advance. Huh. It's definitely an interesting s mixture of opening orders, although the double... Although... 
I think Chaos probably has the macro advantage over Space Marines anyways in some ways, so it seems like as if... Okay, so Pharrell is get, is earning 5 material, and then Mies Malt is earning 5, so, they, so they're basically achieving income parity at this point, although... Hmm... But then again, I mean, I guess one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that Pharrell will in fact be going second next turn, so by going second, he's able to maybe do something a little bit, um, maybe take advantage of this. Well, now that I think of it, I mean, I guess there is definitely a possibility for Pharrell to take over the factory over here by doing an advanced mother on top of this tile, and then on top of the system tile, and then doing a deploy order subsequently. And then once you're able to do that, then, well... Factory knockout is is a pretty it's pretty difficult to come back from a factory knockout, especially early on. So let's take a look and see what Farrow does. Hopefully, there's definitely a chance that he's going to do that, especially considering that he's Farrow. You know, I mean, Farrow just 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 makes good moves. He's not that type of person who only who will <coughs> who does things completely in a completely arbitrary fashion although nowadays although right now it seems like as if as if maybe Mies Malt is planning on maybe reinforcing his planet by by getting some reinforcement tokens and with a total of 10 morale plus all the crazy bs morale abilities that space marines have there is a chance that maybe Pharrell, that maybe Mies Malt could in fact defend his factories. So let's take a look at, but let's take a look and see what goes on this turn as Mies Malt decides to open. I mean, not exactly sure what the best plan of option is, because the problem is, if you're going first, then by mathematical necessity, your opponent can always choose to do an advanced mother, and then if you have like a giant stack of 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 order tokens underneath, then it doesn't really seem like as if there's really too much that you could really do about it. So yeah, no, I can actually I, I can definitely see Pharrell potentially winning this turn. And maybe there was a method to his madness after all. Maybe he just wants to save the deploy order token. So as to make it as efficient as possible. I mean, usually in any type of game that involves some form of like action selection, sometimes sometimes good players will just bank up a lot of resources and then maybe just do a deploy order or maybe just do a build order later on because it's because that can basically save up on action efficiency. So then now that Pharrell is has a bank of 15 material. Let's just be honest, cash, cash tokens are just basically additional material if you think about it. There's he can definitely build a re a reasonably scary army. You no, know? I mean he could definitely build at least one chaos space marine for sure using the force token, and then spam a crap ton of cultists along with maybe a building, along with maybe a city. So in that case, he can gain control of a specific area without having to to give up on the without having to give up control. Like one of the things that I like about cities is that cities just allow you to develop to to give you additional options to obviously tech, but that's obviously the first benefit. But the other thing they also allow you to do is they allow you to hold areas that are relatively safe so you can basically develop any of so you can start developing and pushing your units further to the front and <laughs> further to the front lines. Okay, so it looks like as if Farrow's first option is to use a strategize over there, and that actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. I mean, the opportunity cost of covering up that strategize using a another order token of your own doesn't seem all that fantastic, and but Space Marines have also also have their own strategize as well. So let's take a look and see where things go from this point on. So it seems like as if maybe Mies Malt is... Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I definitely get the impression that Farrow definitely wants to do an advanced mother because if you just capture your fa a factory by turn two, it's it's gg in a lot of in a lot of ways right like this is one of the reasons why you usually don't want your factory to be vulnerable to too many different 
to too many different angles of attack because it just generates too many forcing moves and on your on your end. So let's take a look and see what Mies Malt does. So Mies Malt is probably going to is using an advanced order, but I'm not exactly sure what the if yeah, I'm not exactly sure what how he's actually going to advance in a way that makes any degree of sense whatsoever. I mean, the problem with the with the advance orders that over here there isn't really anything relevant for him, and they're relatively low material planets. With this is a low material density spot, so this seems like a complete waste of an order token. And yeah, I'm not exactly sure what. Mies Malt would be able to do in this case, because the other thing too is that because he has the first mover disadvantage in this case, there is a there is a possibility that he could that chaos could just defend his the remaining objective as much as possible. So it definitely looks like as if maybe Farrow is probably just going for an econ crush, like an econ victory, by just making it so hard for for Mies Malt to come back that there's just no possible way for him to do so. So it seems like as if maybe Mies Malt does in fact want to use an advance order token, but not exactly sure what he wants to do. Maybe he's pro planning on just maybe consolidating his forces on this planet so he can probably go for uh, go for the jugular and then maybe capture this remaining planet. But the thing is, this is he's in a pretty well defended position and it seems like as if what Farrell plans on doing is that he's probably planning on maybe on performing a counter charge a counter charge in place of that. I mean if you capture this planet and you boot the space marine off or you just consolidate this system tile then there's I don't really see much I don't really think that there's actually much that Mies Mall can really do in order to 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 consolidate this control of the center. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely this definitely seems like a very suspicious play. I honestly think that maybe Muse Malt's initial decision to maybe deploy the home system in the center of the map without without plopping down a factory, that probably is not that that probably wasn't necessarily the the worst idea. I mean, you could probably just spam additional bastions, and then with the additional bastions, get recruitment rolls, which is an order, which which is an order upgrade that basically turns your bastions into factories. Okay, so it seems like as if Mies Malt is placing an order token on top, but then it seems like as if Farrow is blocking that with yet another advance. Okay, so, hmm, all right, so this definitely seems pretty interesting. I mean, I definitely thought that Mies Malt would pro- that, that Farrow would probably just go for- for- a strategic crush by taking over the factory in- um, by taking over the Space Marine factory in the top right, but it seems like- Mies Malt might in fact just it seems like as if maybe Farrell might just in fact just be making a leftward push and then maybe forcing and then maybe forcing Mies Malt to thereby pressuring Mies Malt into defending the two chaos objectives which are pretty close to close by. I can definitely see this working for Farrell indeed. So yeah, Mies Malt is in a bit of a pickle. If he tries to use a deploy order over here, it's probably not the best use, and it seems like as if because there are multiple, and it definitely seems like as if because, and because Farrow wants to just beeline over here, taking advantage of the second, of his position as second player, there is definitely a possibility, I'm not exactly sure what, what, Mies Malt could really do in this case in order to 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 possibly defend against this. I mean, given that Farrow's advance orders have both advance orders have already been placed, he could prop. There is a possibility that he could respond with maybe a deploy and maybe just reinforce this front. But yeah, this is not exactly the best position for Space Marines. I mean, if the Space Marines are a little bit too scattered and they don't really and they don't really have a good unified front, such as 
by controlling by controlling like a central tile, their lack of mobility is just going to screw them over <laughs> compared to more mobile factions such as Chaos or Eldar, you know? So yeah, it seems like as if maybe Mies Malt is definitely thinking about how this will go. You know? Who knows? I mean, this might definitely be a short game. I mean, I know that Pharrell has a pretty uncanny ability to just simply close out games pretty early on, so there's not really much that, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess the only way for Mies Malt to maybe come back in this game is for him to, to mess it up really agree, is to hope that Pharrell messes up really egregiously, but Pharrell is just not that type of player who's known for making that many blunders. And because, and the other thing I would also like to point out about this map setup is that because the strategize token is, is on the top left, um, Pharrell can definitely attack both places, one after the other, with a, with an upgraded, with an upgrade advantage. So, yeah, this doesn't really seem to be panning out too well for Mies Malt at the current moment. So, he does have a deploy order. He's probably thinking about a deploy order, but I just don't think that would work too well. He probably doesn't want to go for a second strategize. Although, maybe at this point, maybe a double strategize is probably the best option, because... It is still possible to win against a superior force if you have a better upgraded deck, but it doesn't... But, yeah, it seems like as if Pharrell has probably... Pharrell's master plan has just been to... to... pump a lot of mats, and then just dump all the mats all at once to... to... just do a massive push. <clears throat> leftwards, right? So, yeah, that's definitely one thing you could definitely consider, you know? I mean, I mean, I don't think you necessarily have to spend material every single turn, for sure, although, although, banking your material for, although floating material for too long could definitely lead to some, to some, uh, interesting scenarios where you have, like, 12 mats in your bank, but, your opponent is able to just threaten you immediately. Okay, so it seems like as if, as if, uh, I'm just taking a look and see what he's, what Mies Malt is planning on doing. So it definitely seems like as if he's planning on doing either a, an, an advance or a dominate. Okay, so he's doing, yeah, this doesn't really seem, yeah, I'm not exactly sure if this is something that <laughs> Mies Malt would definitely win. I mean, the other thing you also have to keep in mind is, Assuming that Pharrell wins both of these battles, which is definitely very plausible given that he has an additional strategize order token, there's that's going to create a six material income advantage in his in his favor. And then once when he starts snowballing in this way, well, even if you have a factory, well, if you don't really have any material with which you can produce and you have a limited number of of, of slots on your on your units, then I don't really think that this is going to pan out too well for, for Mies Malls. But we'll have to take a look and see what what this what Space Marines decide to do. Okay, so it seems like as if what Space Marines want to do is they're planning on doing an advance on top as a last moment of desperation. But, okay, so obvious, uh, okay, so uh, again, it seems like as if my initial predictions were in fact correct. Space Marines are in fact planning on doing a deploy. But then because Mies Malt has to reveal that order token, he has to go first, and then when he... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if that's the best idea of Mies Malt. I mean, we definitely have an omniscient view of the game, but he's not... Okay, so it seems like as if he's probably just going to try to boot the cultist out using only the Space Marine on in the current system, because, well, I guess if you use, oh, or he might probably consider getting both, but even if he gets both, it's still possible for, for, for Rao to just make a beeline against the objective by just counter-building, by picking ships, and then once 
Well, no, actually, that wouldn't necessarily work because the problem is there's only what there's only a one map planet over here, so that's basically so there wouldn't be much of a staging area from which you can attack. All right, so it seems like as if Miss Malt decides to, is deciding to commit only one space ring into the current battle, and well, I guess I'll probably just mark with the, where the contested system is. So Miss Malt rolls a Vulcan and a die, a Vulcan and a shield, a shield. Chaos rolls one die, but again, I mean, even the, well, here's the thing. I mean, even if 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 Pharrell loses his battle, he could just play Dark Faith and then just spawn another cultist on the uncontrolled planet over here. So there's no real net loss for for Pharrell, and in fact, he's probably gaining in many ways because because Mies Malt has a reinforcement token, and then and, and that reinforcement token is actually going to go away at the end of the combat, regardless of the outcome. So it seems like as if, yeah, it seems like as if maybe that's what Pharrell is planning on doing. He's definitely just go, just using Dark Faiths. It's like, okay, yeah, sure, who cares? Who cares? Jimmy's just going to like live another day and just teleport all the way to the opposite corner and from that point on it's pop and, and from that point on i think pharrell probably just has this game by just losing if he generates too much of an income swing while being close to his other objective it's it's just i not exactly sure if that's going to work okay so so mis malt opens up with the fury of the ultramar so he has so that forces forces Pharrell to reroll a defense, but I honestly just don't think it really. Oh no no no! Sorry sorry. Oh okay, I see I see. So he's not proccing the first half; he's just using the second half just to get rid of the defense die. But I don't think it really matters at this point because because Pharrell could just play a dark faith, gain a lead, gain a morale die, and then just simply get an additional cultist in. Another friendly or uncontrolled role. Yeah, exactly. So again, like playing, honestly, attacking chaos is sometimes like playing whack a mole. As soon as you hit one cultist, as soon as you hit like one cultist, another one just takes its place. So yeah, that cultist dies. But I think overall, strategically speaking, Pharrell is still definitely in a much better position relative to to Mies Malt. So. Okay, and then now Pharrell has the ability to do, to just basically chain a bunch of actions together because he has, because as you can see, all of the order token stacks are on, are his, are his own. So then Pharrell decides to do a deploy order, and let's take a look and see what he wants to do. Do. Okay, so he's obviously going to spend the cash tokens as you always do whenever you purchase 3D. Whenever you purchase 3D, and let's see what he plans on doing. I mean, obviously, I would definitely build a ship, and maybe one of the big misplays that that Mies Malt has made was probably using the advance order. <laughs> was probably using the advance order and not was skipping the advance order and not blocking ship production. I mean, blocking ship production would have at least bought me some malt a bit more time, but then now it seems like as if as if Pharrell is just gonna make a large army and beeline across the map, so Gonna have to take a look and see what he plans on doing. I mean, his the factory does have a build capacity of four, so will it be another ship or will it be another cultist? I mean, keep in mind that he definitely has at least three cultists. He definitely has at least three units with 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 which he can work. So maybe the additional ship may not necessarily may may not really be all that necessary if he just moves the ship from here to here and then maybe moves his ground forces like so into the surrounding area but or so yeah all right so obvious so Pharrell decides to dump everything and then he decides to build a contingent he decides to build all four units he decides to build a chaos marine two cultists and then a ship well, let's take a look and see if he wants to build any structures so yeah, it definitely looks like as if Pharrell is... Yeah, I mean, he's probably going to build a city. He's definitely going to build a city. And he's going to build a city on that on on the 
very bottom right corner of the map, which is which is a very well defended area, by the way. Okay, so then Pharrell next is going to you do a strategize, which is which I think is obviously the most most rational move, right? Because I mean, if your opponent, if you have the opportunity to strategize before your opponent can, then you can basically launch a timing attack. So it looks like as if Pharrell is going to go for a timing attack. He's going to take Mark of Zinch, which is incredibly effective against space marines and then he's probably gonna discard one of those cards yeah just one of those cards so let's take a look and see what he wants to throw away i mean i guess throwing away dark faith might actually be okay because if you throw away dark because Dark Faith is sort of like a gimped version at this point, and I'm not exactly sure if additional cultists would actually help him too much in this particular scenario. So it seems like his... Oh, okay. Oh, well, he's getting rid of Lear of Chaos, which, to be honest, is usually a little bit too... I, I sometimes feel like his Lear of Chaos could just help your opponent way more than, than helps your own, right? So, it seems like as if maybe, yeah, it seems like as if what Pharrell is planning on doing is he's just sending in a, a strike force of three units over here on this planet, <coughs> over here on, on the bottom left <coughs> planet of the center, <coughs> of the bottom center hex, of the bottom center tile, so then Pharrell is going to be chucking five dice and, well, well, that seems like a pretty decent roll. I mean, space. Keep in mind that space rings have like one kajillion defense cards, so there's just so there is a possibility that he might not necessarily win via via morale. But he does. But Pharrell has in fact taken Mark of Zinch. Who knows? Maybe what Pharrell might consider doing is that he might consider taking Dark Faith, and then by taking Dark Faith, he could in fact pop yet another cultist over here, and then. Maybe follow it up with a mark of Zinch in order to to transform one of his cultists into a chaos marine. Okay, so he does in fact use dark faith, and he is in fact moving to that planet over there, which makes sense. I think I honestly thought that was a bit of a misplay, but then when I remember that dark faith gives you all those gives you all those cultist shenanigans, it's definitely how I can definitely see why he would do that. All right, so. Over here, it seems like as if the only thing that Space Marines can do is just gain another morale die. So that will definitely be a little bit tricky for Zinch, for Zinch for sure. But then keep in okay. But then the thing is, um, Chaos deals three bolt guns against against Space Marines one shield. So he does at least route the Space Marines. So there won't be any more annoying procs in this case. Now, let's see what could be done. I guess maybe, to be perfectly honest, I think Korn's Rage may actually not be a horrible play. Because, because, oh no, but uh, maybe it is a pretty bad play. But anyways, let's take a look and see what happens next. So it seems like as if what, what Pharrell is wanting to do is he's going to pick Impure Zeal. And then by using Impure Zeal, he does at least have the ability to gain... Well, he doesn't need to rally any of his units, but he can gain two bulk guns. So he gains two bulk guns as a result of that, which I think is, a, is the correct response. Now, Mies Malt, on the other hand, gains two defense, and then by using the two... And then the two defense basically just cancel out with the two bulk guns. So... So... We just count the icons from elsewhere. So then space. So then chaos actually deals four bolt guns against two defense. So that doesn't really do much. But now it is time for the third round. It's gonna be. It seems like as if maybe the best option is just mark of corn at this point. You just wanna <clears throat> wanna spend a die. Maybe just 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 slaughter the space marine <laughs> space marine Billy. Once and for all, you know, and just just see what happens. So, but it looks like as if maybe maybe Mies Malt will probably just respond with a recon with a recon just to preserve the space marine. Although it seems like as if maybe at this point, if I wanted to prevent Pharrell from taking from dom from taking over the other system from taking over the uh, the his first objective, maybe. 
Fury of the Ultramar or Ambush actually probably would have worked a little bit better. But okay, well, let's take a look at this. So then he's going to take two defense, which I think is the strictly better option over here. So that basically cancels out with one Vulcan. So then you have two guns. You have two four guns versus three defense. That's not going to work. So Space Marines will, in fact, have to retreat. He's probably just going to have to retreat back over. Well, the only legal retreatment path is just along this planet over here. So let's take a look and see what happens. All right, so space, so Chaos wins without, without suffering any loss of blood. So now Space Marines have to go next. Now let's take a look and see what Space Marines do. If I had to be honest, I think that winning a ship combat in this case would actually be the preferred choice because by using a, a uh, because by winning space combat, you can at least block Chaos from advancing a little bit further. And if Chaos will in fact advance a little bit further, you gain a signal in adventure. So that's exactly what Mies Malt is planning on doing. He's planning on just simply going for a space battle to hopefully drive chaos out of the system. Let's see if he uses the reinforcement token or not. Hmm, now that I think of it, maybe Feral would have been a little bit better off just getting just getting two ships as opposed to just as opposed to an additional cultist. That additional cultist may not have made a difference because now Mies Malt is bringing in a reinforcement token for the extra two morale or for the extra two hit points. And oh, and Pharrell has kind of gotten a little unlucky. He hasn't drawn any marks of Zinch and he only has a mark of. He only has mark, marks of corn, some foul worships. That's not. And he didn't even draw any of his morale dice at all. So there's definitely. So. Again, this this order token is a little bit wasted. Okay, so it seems like as if maybe maybe Mies Malt might in fact be in the game after all. He's not. He's definitely doing a little bit better than I had anticipated. So let's just wait a moment, and see what they decide to do. Okay, so. Pharrell is going for an impure zeal, which allows him to gain some extra bulk guns and possibly route some units. But Mies Malt is opening up with a Fury of the Ultramar, so then he rerolls one deep. Okay, so he's just not forcing. He's not doing the first half. He's just forcing the second half. So yeah, it seems like as if. So Pharrell will, at the very least, be taking some damage this turn. He doesn't have more more leadership than his units, but he is trying. But he is forcing Mies Malt to pick between either one one bolt gun or to route one of his units. So it seems like as if yeah, it seems like as if maybe the best op the better option in this case is to probably just route a unit because if he yeah because if 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 Mies Malt lets for Rao take the second bulk gun, it's probably not going to pan out too well for him. Yeah, you know, now that I think of it, I actually do think that maybe what Pharrell could have possibly done is maybe just conquer this factory early on, so as to deny Space Marines a good chance of winning, you know? But who knows, maybe this probably might have, this could possibly pan out, and this could be a better method of winning, right? And, and, I, and I think you also have to take into consideration that Space Marines did a double stack over here, and usually when you do a double stack against against the second player, it's going to result in some pretty screwy things, right? So it seems like as if maybe Mies Malt is just taking the... Okay, so he, so both of the... So all of the units are basically routed. It seems like as if as if the one defense did in fact, one damage did in fact go through, routing the other strike cruiser. So the next option that Pharrell is planning on doing is just playing Foul Worship, hopefully just to prevent him from losing even more guys. Okay, so, so Space Marines play a Recon, which allows him to gain two bulk guns or two defense, and Looks like as if, based upon the current stats, he does have 
So he probably just wants to try to aim for a kill. Well, let's take a look and see what Pharrell rolls. If he rolls anything that's not a defense, he's... Oh, okay, well, it seems like as if Pharrell's just dead then, because... Three, four bolt guns minus two defense, that's enough to kill Pharrell's ship. Yeah, I, if I had to be honest, I think that maybe if Pharrell had gone for the second ship, that probably would have been the better option, as opposed to getting an additional cultist. Because by having two ships, you're rolling four dice in combat, and those and dice early on, at the very least, tend to add up pretty well. So Pharrell is basically forced to just place his advanced to order token on top, and then Mies Malt, on the other hand, is going to reveal his deploy order, which gives him... Hmm, let's take a look and see what he's going to do. I have a strong sneaking suspicion that he's probably going to use two material to do to build a bastion and therefore bastion camp, which is one of the most toxic, annoying, yet unfortunately legal strategies in Forbidden Stars. I mean, when your opponent just bastion camps on your objectives, there's it's 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 pretty difficult to <laughs> uproot them and maybe that's where level three units come on come in okay yeah so it definitely looks like as if as if Mies malt is in fact going to do a bastion camp on on chaos's objective so yeah i honestly kind of feel like as if maybe this wasn't the best option because the other thing that because again it's just yeah it's a little bit scuffed so so, in this case, Mies Malt is using a Strategize, and then by using a Strategize, let's take a look and see what he plans on doing. I mean, looks like as if, well, I mean, he can't build, he can't get any, any order upgrades that require at least one city, because he doesn't have any cities, he can't, <clears throat> that's not possible, right? But, let's take a look and see what he gets. I mean, I don't know if Hold the Line might necessarily be the best idea. Yeah, I mean, in this case, maybe Glory and Death could actually work, given that Pharrell has definitely skewed skewed towards morale. But the problem I just have with Hold the Line is, again, another thing that I constantly see day in and day out is people being way too conservative with their with their build options. I mean with their with their deck building options. A lot of people will usually tend to skew towards defense, but again, like if you keep throwing rock, I'm just gonna keep throwing paper and then you're gonna lose as a result of that. I mean that's how that's how the game works. I mean in this case I actually think that maybe glory and death actually could have been a, a much more usable upgrade, especially considering how Pharrell is skewing towards morale and considering how how space how chaos at generally tends to lack a lot of defense but maybe hold the line is probably the better choice in the long run although although simply but but the problem with having with having a with having a combat deck that's too defensive is while it might definitely help you stand your ground it's not necessarily going to help you advance any further or clear off material on the map so let's take a look and see what either player draws. So, Mies Malt is drawing, and he picks a an unwavering resolve. So, it's at the bare, so at the very worst, it's basically just an open pass. But hey, I mean, open passes are pretty amazing in this game. Like, if you have the ability to just pass initiative, especially when you're going as the first player, or even worse, when you're really toxic and, you, and you're going as the second player, there is a lot it's it's definitely a pretty devastating call. So Mies Malt is deciding where to move the warp storm, and it looks like as if he wants to make it a little bit more open. And then Chaos on the other hand, oh, he's got some pretty juicy ones. Okay, so it definitely looks like as if as if Chaos wants profits and signs. I mean, a d free cultists are just are just a little bit too good to pass up on. I mean, he will have to move this warp storm diagonally across onto this adjacent border over here. And well, I mean, <laughs> at the very least, say what you will, but this, yeah, this card is definitely a really good clutch card. This card has definitely helped me win a couple of games or just or just at least consolidate my positions i actually I, I remember drawing this one card against eldar and then afterwards eldar just wanted just conceded afterwards simply because it was just simply because it was just 
too well defended and then i was able to and then because i was generating a lot more income per turn i was able to just simply get there so yeah it seems like as if at the very least Overall, Farrow does have a dominating economic advantage. Last turn, he gained 5, 7, 8. He gained 9 material to Mies Malt's 2, 4. Oh, to, to Mies Malt's Pitley 4 material. Yeah, you see, kids? This is one of the reasons why you really got to pay attention to economy because it kind of, because at, at some point or another, if you're bleeding too much economy, there's just no way in hell you're going to be capturing both of your objectives and then your opponent can just use all the money in order to win the game you know like it's it's it, it, that's just how that's just how warfare works you know warfare is 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 tactics in the short term but strategy in the long run and it seems like as if for is probably going to go for a long run game now one of the things that i could definitely see for doing at least if he wants to just be even more greedy and then just gain much more map dominance is to capture the two material planet over here so in that case space marines have only an income of two and well when you have an income of two it kind of really doesn't matter what your factory produces right the other thing i can also see for route doing is maybe leveraging his current advantage in cities by building yet more city by filling in yet another city slot over here so you develop even more guys so but it takes a look but turns out it seems like as if for Rao just wants to do a dominate order over here but can't really blame him i think dominate in this area may not be such a bad idea he could definitely start expanding out into this area get more money expand out into this area get more money so it's definitely that now let's take a look and see what mies malt does i i think mies malt uh, you know what I remember the last cast that I made, I called it a little bit too early because I assumed that, uh, because I assumed that the, that, that Eldar early on would just simply leverage their economic advantage. But it seems like as if, but, but I know for Rao, like for Rao, I've actually talked with him and I've seen the way that he plays and that guy, he, he, he knows what he's doing. He's, he's not that type of guy who just simply throws good opportunities out the window right um, right away so i'm going to assume that if that if Farrow just ends up playing rationally then no matter then it's really just a matter of how he's going to win you know like he could just simply take the highway to victory immediately or he could just take the local suburbs uh, take the take the local roads and then just do it in a more scenic fashion i mean i i i definitely do think that at least in this case it's probably just a matter of when and not necessarily a matter of if for Farrell, because I just know that that guy just doesn't throw games. He just, he, he, he's very, he, he, he can be real, quite methodical and, and when he's in a dominating position like this, he will use it to his advantage to, to gain an even more dominating advantage. You know, I mean, I remember one time, you know, it's basically like what, Tasteless or Artosis, who are two uh, two pretty famous star StarCraft casters, basically say, what do you do when you're ahead? Well, just get even more ahead, you know, because when you get more ahead, your opponent ha is the you're forcing your opponent to make the risky moves in order to come back. But then because you're forcing them to give you a lot of information, especially when they're not, especially when they're behind, you can basically leverage that against them. Whereas if you're ahead, especially in a game with incomplete payoffs or with incomplete or... With, with, with it, sorry, not incomplete payoffs, but imperfect information, then you're going to, then you basically win on both axes, right? So, yeah, it seems like as if what Mies Mald is planning on doing is he's probably planning on doing an advance order to possibly drive chaos out of the system. Now, the problem is if chaos loses this system over here, there's a very, actually all three of these units are actually going to die because they're they they don't really have any place from which a uh, place to which they can retreat so again i think that maybe the biggest i, I think that for probably could have made a bet made some better decisions by by perhaps getting a second ship but uh, then again he could use a strategize and given that for has one city there's also the possibility of for maybe building a second city and then just slapping on a demonic resilience and then if you i mean if you get your level two combat upgrade just a level two combat upgrade by turn three that can definitely set you off to the races for sure 
So let's take a look and see what Mies Malt is planning on doing over here. So it seems like as if Mies Malt is planning on establishing a secondary base of operations over here, maybe using a bastion, maybe getting some more bastions and just doing some more bastion camping. But usually if my opponent just does that, then I'll probably just counter by just being more greedy and taking more money. Like at some point or another, if you have enough money, It'll solve all your problems. Maybe not in real life, but it, uh, but look, it, it's a game, okay? So it seems like Hizu Farao is going for a double strategize. And I actually think this this makes sense from a strategic game plan, uh, from a strategic viewpoint, right? Because if you do a double strategize, especially when you're ahead in one city, you can just basically purchase like a crap ton of upgrades and then your opponent will... And then, and then your opponent will probably have to respond in time. Now, if... Pharrell finds a way to do a double strategize, especially when he has two cities. That could definitely be... That could definitely put uh, Space Marines a little bit further behind. Okay, so Space Marines are probably just going to do a double deploy in this area, which is... Which is something that I wouldn't necessarily think is bad, right? I mean, at the very least, it seems like as if... Mies Malt is recognizing that he's in a bad situation, but it seems like it, it, it really does appear that uh, that he's probably just delaying the inevitable. He probably just wants to make a valiant last stand before before he dies out with a whimper. But let's take a look and see what Farrow does. I mean, he could possibly maybe get a second city over here or no no he's going to do an advance which is yeah i think that actually makes sense i think an advance actually makes a lot more sense in this case because now because you're basically threatening both spaces right again like this is one of the reasons why you really got to avoid forcing moves or forks a lot of a lot of professional players in chess will usually try to avoid forcing moves if if possible right again it seems like as if what Farrow is doing in this case is he's probably for doing um creating a forcing move by either maybe taking over the two material planet or by forcing him to defend the factory and i don't think for think me small could do can do either one of them given the state that he's in okay so then now it's for rao's turn and then for rao is the first is uh, for rao has to go first so let's take a look and see what he does all right so um He could decide to attack over here and then just move his contingent of Chaos Space Marines onto the factory. That could definitely be... I could definitely see that as a viable move for sure. I mean, if you lose enough factories, then it's not going <clears> to... <throat> then it probably won't pan out very well for Chaos. But let's take a look and see what Farrow is planning on doing. He is... Okay, so it looks like as if Farrow does in fact want to use an advance order. And let's take a look. Okay, so it looks like as if Farrow is just 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 taking the slow but steady way towards victory, you know? He's just taking that nice scenic view, biding his time and conquering and gobbling up as much material as he can. Okay, so it looks like okay, so Farrow has is rolling four bulk guns against the one morale die of the scout. That's not exactly something that he wants to do, that, that wants to be done. He could probably just go for a dark faith and then just get some extra cultists. I mean, it seems like as if that's... Regardless of what Space Marines play, they have... Their deck is mostly just morale-based at this point, so it's not too bad. Okay, so let's take a look and see where, what he plans on doing. So... Farrow is going to play a Mark of Zinch, gaining a morale die, but of course that pesky little morale die over there isn't really going to help him too much. So maybe he's probably just setting up for a, for a Dark Faith in order to get additional cultists in the system, because, well, why would you not want additional cultists? Now, if, in this case, if he chooses two bolt guns and two bolt guns, he... Farrow will in fact have to route one of his units or at least or kill off a cultist. He's probably just gonna route this Chaos Marine though, but 
Yeah, he's definitely just going to route the chaos with it. So, okay, and it looks like as if the cult... Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Was, that... was there a bit of a misplay there? Because I think he had four guns. He had four guns, didn't he? Or... That is so strange. Hold on, let me think about that. So he had four guns. Wait, isn't this... Hold on, I probably just have to send them a message through this chat. So, isn't the scout dead? It's pretty strange. Because it was like, four guns. Oh, oh, okay, okay, I see. So, so it was basically just a retreat from a recon. Okay, all right, that's good. So, so he basically used the, used the, the, the recon retreat just to simply retreat the scouts there. But even then, I'm not exactly sure if this is necessarily the best possible, the best possible decision. I mean, over here, he only has four scouts, so Pharrell could actually easily take over this planet yet again. All right, so let's take a look and see what space marines do. Okay, so Pharrell decides to use a strategize order as his second order, and then, yeah. Oh, sorry, I missed a dominate. The dominate was somewhere else over there. Okay, so then let's take a look and see what Pharrell does. Okay, so Pharrell is taking favor of the Dark Gods, and he's definitely going to pick up, I'm going to assume he's going to pick up one of those combat upgrades. I mean, Marcus Lanesh is not a bad pick, but... Mark of Corn definitely punches pretty hard. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Mark of Slanesh definitely looks pretty tempting. Mark of Nurgle. Okay, so it seems like as if Pharrell does in fact want Mark of Nurgle. He's going to get rid of Foul Worship, which is a pretty sensible choice. Okay, so then now Mies Malt goes. He performs yet another deploy, which... Okay, so he finally has a secondary base of operations over there, as I suspected. There is a possibility for Mies Malt to come back in, but at two, but but the problem is at two income a turn. I just don't really think that this is going to be viable. You know, like you can have all the factories you want, but if no one's shipping you supplies, they're kind, they're just sitting there. They're just sitting there, rotting. Whereas if you take a look at Farrow's, <clears throat> if you whereas if you take a look at Farrow's income, he has an income of six, eight, nine, ten. He has an a whopping income of eleven materials. So my goodness, my goodness gracious, he probably could have. So yeah, he actually has more than enough to just basically completely max out. And I think from this point on, he's just. It's not going to work too well. Okay, so he's going to use another strategize, which is something that I definitely think is pot, is doable. And he's going to get four order tokens. Four order tokens with favor of the dark gods. So let's take a look and see what he gets next. He's going to get dread ritual, of course, because why wouldn't you? And he's going to get mark of corn. Mark of Corn, replacing it with Corn's Rage because it's just because Corn's Rage is just an even shittier version of Mark of Corn. So okay, so it seems like as if as if Pharrell will actually not go will will not suffer an overflow error this turn. He's probably just going to get more. He is in fact going to get a he's going to end the turn with a level of material, assuming that he holds this planet, but there's a chance that maybe the Space Marine yeah, unfortunately, I don't think this is going to cut it. I mean, you can't rally on offense using using, using hold the line. So, yeah, I mean, but either way, even if Mies Malt does end up taking one of the planets, I do think that Pharrell would just... Pharrell still has an overwhelming income advantage at this point. All right. So it's a two v one. So it's two dice against one die. Oh, he's bringing in two K two space marines. Well, that's a little bit unusual, my friend. I mean, I mean, I mean. Even if you win, you're gonna have to kill off one one space marine. And at this point, if you're 
given how overwhelming Pharrell's material advantage is, losing losing addition losing even more material on the board just doesn't seem like a it just doesn't seem like a very good play so to speak it's very it's just it's it's you're just basically scratching your itch with poison ivy at this point if you and and and, and hopefully all of you get that analogy i don't have to over explain myself Okay, so it looks like as if as if he drew a lot of cards that use that require a chaos meridian in order to be useful. But it seems like as if maybe what he's what Pharrell is probably trying to do is maybe just transform the the cultist into a chaos marine so he could probably proc the the later cards. I mean, there's definitely that. So it seems like as if what he's gonna do what Mies Malt will do is just respond with an ambush. So using an ambush, he's going to gain two bulk guns. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to save save Jimmy the Cultist. I mean, at the very least, Jimmy the Cultist has definitely outperformed himself relative to last game. So, yeah, I think he's dead. Honestly, I think at this point... Oh, oh, oh no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I, I, I forgot. You gotta resolve the abilities first and then do this. Okay, so it seems like... Okay, well, his sacrifice was not in vain after all. So it seems like as if now he's dealing five guns against one defense. Okay, well, he's... Well, well, well the Chaos Marine is still dead anyhow. That's still one dead marine i mean at this point i probably would have gone for some sort of desperado move by getting something like mark of corn mm. and then and then in this case if i have five balkans total he would be forced to kill a space marine, but he would be forced to kill a space marine either way so it's yeah it's a little bit uh yeah, so, oh, that's strange. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. Are they, are they discussing some some rules change? But, okay, well, it seems like as if maybe the space plane is just... Is just a little bit... Yeah, it seems like as if maybe the space plane is just... Gonna be there, so, yeah. Alright, so now Farao has to respond in kind using a Dominate, which is the only order token that's available to him at that point. Maybe he might consider using a Dominate and then and then taking a cultist back to his system, to his original system. Or or he's just gonna get some more material. I mean it's Farao. I mean he knows when to win the when to go for the economic game. Right, so he's gonna do that, but okay. So thankfully, Mies Malt is not able to do too much. He's able to maybe at least. Okay, so it seems like as if Rao just wants to try. Sorry, Mies Malt just wants to try to do a bombardment, but at 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 one to four at. At twenty at a twenty five percent chance, maybe he probably should have just just went in with a space marine. That probably would have been the better move. So, it seemed like as if it was a bit of a misplay on Mies Malt's part. At the very least, it would prevent Pharrell from getting to even more money than he already has. Although I'm not exactly sure. Okay, so it seems like as if Pharrell has eleven mat, which is bringing him up to thirteen, and then Mies Malt has only three. Again, all those factories are not terribly has is going to gain an additional three material. Again, all those factories are not necessarily going to do you much good if they if you don't have much material to begin with. So, it seems like okay, yeah, it seems like as if Pharrell has can choose between any one of them. Oh man, oh my. My oh my. He's got prayer to the dark gods. He's got through the warp, seduced by chaos, a whole slew, like a whole unholy. Oh crap! It's not a set of three cards, but still. Yeah, I wonder what I would probably do with Pharrell as Pharrell. Maybe, maybe seduced by chaos is not a bad thing. I mean, it does allow you to just auto win a combat, even if you. If you do, it probably does allow him to auto-win combat, although it seems like as if maybe through the warp may not be a bad idea. 
a prayer to the dark gods. Man, it's I, man. I feel like 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 a kid in a candy store. A lot of the chaos events are so good. But I mean, I guess if he goes for Mark of Zinch, he could get additional cultists. But that would but every sector. It, save for the top left, gives him a cultist. So okay, so it seems like as if he's as if Farrow is probably just gonna ch gonna chance it using incantation of Zinj. So let's take a look and see how he decides to move the warp storm first. So he's going to move the warp storm all the way over there, and he's gonna pick three more cards. He's going to pick his own. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Okay, so it seems like as if maybe he's going to get Blight of Nurgle, but he could get touched by the warp. Okay, so he's going to get touched by the warp, and he's going to sack his cultist over here just to gain a level 2 up combat upgrade. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's basically how Pharrell does does his games. Like, whenever I think that he's making some move, I always wonder what he's up to, and he does tell me that getting that <laughs> that th that he when he plays as chaos he actually does try to set up for for touch by the warp plays so let's take a look and see what he plans on getting i mean he could get a combat upgrade yet again i mean chaos united tends to be a pretty good card especially against <laughs> against space marines but Okay, so it looks like as if he is in fact getting the combat upgrade, and then he's probably going to get he's going to chuck away Dark Faith, perhaps. Yeah, he's going to chuck away Dark Faith for Chaos United, which is definitely a really good counter pick against Space Marines. Because as I've said, Chaos United is basically just a just gives you a giant block of icons. I mean, when you summon units from another place, they're effectively additional defense and morale icons, right? So Yeah, yeah. Definitely seems a little bit Yeah, I think Mies Malt is definitely in trouble now. I mean at some point or another when you, at some point or another, more stuff just beats less stuff. And it kind of even doesn't even matter what type of stuff it is. It's just that at this point, quantity really does have a quality on its own. So, yeah, me Small definitely, this could in fact be a, who knows, this could a a actually even be a game where, a, a game that's won by concession alone, so we're going to have to take a look at that. So Mies Malt is the second player. Let's take a look and see what he does. I mean, I guess if I was for Rao, I would probably just get further ahead, right? I mean, when you're ahead, just get even further ahead, and then once when you're even further ahead, just get even further ahead. You know, just don't make any moves that would make that would throw you the game. So, okay, so, huh, all right. So maybe Miss Malt is probably going for it. They could possibly be discussing the possibility of concession. I mean, honestly, if I was in in Space Marine's position. I'm really not sure if I could really pull off a victory at this point. You'd have to be able to somehow capture this objective while preventing Chaos from catching, capturing either one of those two, which is definitely doable, but the problem is, it's just that Mies Malt just hasn't really built enough ships. Well, his ships are completely out of position, so it would basically cost him two Tempe in order to, two advance orders in order to get him to get over here. And then on top of that, it's just, just doesn't seem very logistically feasible at this point. So not exactly sure what, what Mies Malt could do. And keep in mind that now Chaos has the, has the super cheap Chaos United teleport card. So there's... So, again, regardless of Chaos's positioning, he could just always concentrate his forces when necessary. So, yeah, but let's take a look and see what Mies Malt does. Maybe he might have a plan. Okay, so he's deciding to fight on a little bit more. He's going to do... Okay, he's probably going to do an advance order. He's probably going to do an advance order, which actually makes sense. I mean, being able to maybe swing three material in your favor could definitely 
help out with this relatively dire economic situation. I mean, I guess if you if you're able to swing material, that could work, but even now it's a little bit uh, it's still a little bit tricky in, sure. in this regard. Okay, so let's take a look. See what Chaos is planning on doing. So, yeah. I mean, I guess maybe one thing Chaos might consider doing. Oh, and by the way, Sir Handsome, is it okay if you could maybe just mute your mic if there's some sound? I just. Well, uh, you, you, like, honestly, after the cast, I'm totally fine if anybody d wants to talk with me or maybe refute some of my, my speculations or cast afterwards, but it's just that, like, okay, that's good. Okay. But yeah, it's just that during the cast, I just prefer to have as little interference as possible. But, okay, so Pharrell is placing an advance order. It seems like as if he's probably just, oh, no, or he's... Okay, so it looks like as if maybe Pharrell wants to do a deploy order. Hmm. Seems like as if maybe Miss Malt is actually managing it a little bit better than usual. I think that usually whenever I'm ahead like this, I usually prefer to leverage my advantages by just getting more cities. And because once when I have more cities, I can build better units and then just just let that snowball into victory. I mean, I guess double strategize isn't necessarily a bad thing either, right? So, at the very least, Pharrell does, in fact, have a much more well-upgraded combat deck. So, that out of the way, let's take a look and see what Space Marines can do to possibly win back this game, although it seems a little bit uh, difficult at this point. Let's take a look. Who knows? Always be a little bit more secure. Always be some su some some surprises. Who knows? Alrighty then. So, um, yeah, I think this deployment is definitely a pretty safe deployment. I think that it because it is mathematically impossible for for me small to take over any of the cities over here. Or even if he does take over this place, this the two map planet over here, it's probably not going to do much. Alright, so Mismaldo is probably just going to use some more dominating orders and just maybe go back, lick his wounds, re-establish some... Just, re just rebuild some of his forces. Okay, so seems like as if maybe Mismaldo is probably holding on reasonably okay, although knowing Pharrell, he does have... He, he does know how to close off the game reasonably well. And he's going to do so by placing an advance order token on top of his deploy. <laughs> on top of his deploy. Which makes sense. I mean, I guess if you use an advance order, you can kick the Space Marine out of the system. Or you could probably, <laughs> you could also probably try to kick him out using the ship as well. I guess either way could definitely work. So let's take a look and see what... Mise Malt does in response. Let's take a look. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how I would probably how I would possibly come back as space marines. I mean I mean you could probably try to advance and maybe retake the two material planet. I mean, using two advance orders, it is possible to maybe just retake the three map planet and the two map planet, but it's not. Seems a little bit unlikely at this point. I mean, maybe for Ral might consider defending using a two material, maybe by putting a bastion on top because. Mies Malt could in fact attack using maybe a Space Marine and two Scouts, but based upon the, his current board situation and based upon what, what Mies Malt is capable of doing, yeah, there... That could still... I still think that Pharrell... That, that, that this board position would still favor Pharrell, but who knows? Let's take a look and see what happens. You know, let's... Hmm, yeah, so... All right, so let's take a look and see what type of things that Mies Malt has. I mean, I, I I do think that maybe even if Mies Malt does try to take over some, take back some 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 of the space, some of the 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 oil rigs as I would like to call them, like the high density material planets. 
I still think that because Pharrell has a much better combat deck on average, there's just not gonna... I think Pharrell might, might just simply leverage his better combat deck in order to win over the game. Okay, so Space Marines are going to plan on doing a strategize, but when you have a budget of only three material, it's... it's you're basically like... It's basically like 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 spreading. It's basically you're just basically you have too little butter spread across too much bread. Whereas for Rao, on the other hand, he has definitely more more than enough butter to spread a long, fewer slices of bread, so to speak. Right. So okay, so it seems like as if for Rao definitely will attempt a defense using a bastion. And keep in mind that that for Rao does have a reinforcement token, as well as the ability to teleport extra units elsewhere on the map in case if he needs needs them to defend this area. So yeah, this doesn't really look like as if it's going to be too helpful. I mean, Mies Malt is on his last order token, and if he basically decides to attack right now using his scouts, that's probably not going to do too well. And if he tries to attack, bombard the Chaos Marine, <clears throat> to smithereens he's going to need three bulk guns and four dice and again i'm not that type of guy who can do math on stream but still but i do think that it's definitely less significantly less than a 30 percent chance but let's take a look and see what Mies malt plans on doing there's a possibility that maybe Mies malt might defend this factory or maybe he might be going elsewhere either way i just don't really see too much Hope for him. Okay, I mean, he could place the Dominate Order over there, but I think that Farrell would probably just respond in kind by placing an, an Advance Order on top. And especially considering how Farrell has a Deploy Order, he could definitely just do a Deploy first and then, and then attack with an overwhelming... And then just attack with overall force. And keep in mind that he that Pharrell definitely has a lot more material than he, to, to has a lot of material he can spare. So again, he can just get more guys and then just develop this cultist by maybe building a city, by building yet another city, and then attacking afterwards. So let's take a look and see what Mies Malt is planning on doing. I mean, honestly, if I was in Mies Malt's situation, I would seriously consider consider conceding at this point although sometimes people just like being a little stubborn and just make that last stance all right so Mies Malt looks like as if he's about to use a dominate but I think the dominate order is a little bit rude. oh yes and I also forgot about dread ritual dread ritual allows for Rao to summon and to summon a hell brood, which would definitely be more than enough to just crush any and crush that measly force of four scouts defending the factory. So yeah, yeah. It's definitely looking pretty dire for space moons. And even if Chaos does lose a couple of battles this turn, I think Chaos is still a little bit too big to fail because Chaos just has is just controlling much more money on average. So there's yeah, it's yeah, Pharrell definitely has placed them into a big right, So so Mies Malt is just deciding what order he's gonna place. I mean, I honestly don't think I honestly don't think that smothering this order is actually gonna do do very much. Maybe smothering smothering this order could actually help, but no, Mies Malt chose poorly and now he has to live with that consequence of choosing poorly which is deploy well i mean i guess he could do a deploy and then maybe get some more space rings but again he's got three material and three material is just three material against 10 is just is it's a pretty large differential to say the very least okay so so Pharrell is just assigning upon his life last order and let's see where he's what he's gonna plan on doing i mean i guess he probably could do another material do a one material swing by attacking the space marine here but that just doesn't yeah but i'd honestly but i guess maybe at this point i'd much rather just 
just crush the factory. And then once when I crush the factory, I could probably just win via that. Also, okay, but it seems like as if maybe Pharrell probably just wants to move some more guys across the map. So now Mies Malt has to go first. So then Mies Malt chooses strategize. <clears throat> choose a strategize order and let's take a look and see what he's planning on getting. Drop pods might be a pretty viable option. Uh, uh, Glory and Death might actually be okay, but I mean, Chaos has Chaos United, so it's not something that's gonna work. Okay, so it seems like as if maybe. Mies Malt is just using the Strategize Order token just to get an event draw without spending anything on upgrades. So then Farrow is now going to use a an Advance Order, which is something that he's going to... Okay, so it seems like as if he's just going to reclaim his Void Area by using, <laughs> using Ship to Ship Combat and... Let's take a look and see if he wants to spend the reinforcement token. I mean, I guess in this case I probably wouldn't because I have such a huge, such a massively upgraded combat deck that it's probably not really worth it to begin with. So let's take a look and see what he gets. Okay, so he's got Mark of Corn, Impure Zeal, Chaos United, Mark of Nurgle. Chaos United seems like a pretty good all-rounder play. Okay, so it seems like as if maybe maybe Pharrell does in fact want it, want to place the additional reinforcement token for safety. Although I probably would have saved that reinforcement token over for for the oil rig planet over here, or for oil rig combat. But maybe building more ships is just a little bit more important for for Pharrell at this for Pharrell at this point and. And this more or less just serves as a distraction for <clears throat> against against Space Marines. Okay, so uh, Space Marines have already chosen. Pharrell has chosen a Mark of Nurgle, so he's going to. Okay, so he is in fact going to spend at least one leadership. Oh no, no, no! no. He's just going to prop the secondary. He's not going to spend any battle dice at all. Okay, and then. Space Marines in turn respond with an ambush, but the ambush, but the bulk guns and the shields cancel each other out, so there's no damage dealt on his part. But Farrow does, in fact, at least wrap the strike cruiser. So, with that out of the way, we move on to the next round. So, so far, Farrow is definitely equal, is capable of blocking all of the hits made by. <clears throat> made by Space Marines, but um, let's take a look and see what they do next. Yeah, I think Mark of Core might actually be a pretty okay play because it is a routed unit, right? So he's going to play a, a Mark of Corn, and then because there are no defense, and then because he has no defense dice, I think he's actually just forced to kill the Strike Cruiser. I think it's just a kill effect. Yeah, there's just no way that that ship is surviving. But I do think that according to technicalities, you do have to go until the very end of the combat round in order for that to happen. But I mean, it's hold the line, and I don't think that there's going to be much. So yeah, it turns out that Chaos wins a pretty convincing battle. Although to be perfectly fair, I really don't think that the reinforcement token was a necessary play. I really would have saved the reinforcement token for this area over here. Okay, so Mies Malt is using a deploy order. Let's take a look and see where what he plans on building. Let's take a look. Let's take a look and see where what he plans on building. I mean, he's only got three material and no forge tokens, so unfortunately the best he can possibly build is just a scout. Or, no, he's just going to place it on top of his event deck. Okay, so then now Pharrell is going to use a deploy order? Yeah, he's going to use a deploy order, and I'm definitely going to assume that he's just going to build himself a bastion. Because, why the heck not, man? Like, Chaos Marine with Bastion 
it's almost impossible to take it over. And then now, Me Smalt is choosing a dominate order. Per get, and he's going to get a reinforcement token. He can still at least spend one material to get a space moon for sure. But now let's take a look and see what. Yeah, it seems like this is like based upon the two order tokens. I'm pretty sure that Pharrell is probably just going to do a deploy or do a second deploy order over here using Dread Ritual to gain lots of dudes. Yeah, of course. He's going to use a deploy order. And then by using a deploy order, he's probably just going to get. Oh, let's take a look and see what he's going to get. Okay, so time for a bit of multivariable calculus. What's the correct me mixture of cultists? So he's going to get two... He's going to develop both of his... His two remaining iconoclasts. Not too surprising. Seems like as if Pharrell is actually is going to be deliberating between cultists and chaos marines, perhaps, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, if it was me, if it was definitely up to me at this case, I would probably just close out the game a little bit further and get even further ahead by purchasing a second city. So over here, that's 3, 5, 7, 9. That's 9 material. I'm not exactly sure if that's the best possible. Okay, well, maybe he's just, he, he's just go, maybe he's just going for a mega swarm. Maybe he's just going to go for, like, a mega model swarm, although... Not exactly sure if that's the best possible case because there's only a because there's a maximum of only four units that can be held in this area, right? So it's not like as if he can necessarily swarm too much. Okay, so it seems like as if as if for Rao, Okay, yeah. So it definitely does seem like as if for Rao is just going to be getting more cultists, and he's probably going to be leveraging his his additional material his economic advantage just to get further ahead. I mean once we get once when chaos hits level three and starts getting and starts getting death and despair, I just don't think that there's any way that space moon like Chaos is basically like the new Eldar at that point. Okay, so it seems like as if Chaos is in fact doing that, and then he's going to use Dread Ritual to place to summon a Chaos Marine. Yeah, I think this would actually make sense. I mean, you have to keep in mind that these cities, in some ways, are low-key level zero units because by having a level zero unit, you could, you can definitely. It allows you to develop your level zero units and then just move them elsewhere, right? Like once you have a good secure foothold, or as I like to call it, like a regional hegemony in your area, you could that basically gives you freedom to roam, and that gives, also gives you the ability to gain to just let your guys chill out while while forcing your opponent to do to make suboptimal decisions. Okay, so it definitely looks like as if Mies Malt is attacking with a Space Marine and then two scouts against Chaos's Bastions. Now, one of the things that I also like to mention in this game, and this is another piece of commentary that, that, that I haven't really... that doesn't get thrown around a lot, offense cards are actually really good defensively, especially if you have a Bastion, because keep in mind, because the thing is, even if your opponent, say, deals 4 or 5 damage back to you, you could assign the damage in such a way, so, such that the Bastion tanks most of the hit, uh, tanks the remaining 2 damage, and therefore doesn't, and therefore becomes unaffected. Okay, so it looks like as if Pharrell is going to open up with a Chaos United, so, whereas whereas Mies Malt is going to get <clears throat> Blessed Power Armor, which gives him two defense, and then he's probably just going to convert the two offense into two defense. But again, again, maybe maybe I sound like a broken record at this time, at this point, but be very wary of making too many defense plays, because the thing is, if you if you play defense, your opponent can basically pay paper, and paper in this case is basically more row. So... So, again, it's true that while Space Marines on average definitely have higher morale, if all you do is just defense, 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 and then you pile on more defense on top of more defense, and then your rocks have rocks, and then those rocks have more rocks, then it, 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 it's, it, it, it just seems like really blind play. So, anyways, for Rao definitely guessed correctly. He definitely chose Chaos United, because Chaos United obviously 
pays off most of the time against Space Marines, especially when you're right, when you're already high in morale. So, um, it seems like as if Chaos can only. Okay, so so Space Marines don't want to route any of their units, so that's gonna happen. And then now, um, Farrow's gonna bring in a cultist to the to the oil rig, and let's take a look and see what happens next. So it's three guns against a uh, one kajillion shields. So there's no way that so no one is dealing damage to each other. Yeah, like usually whenever my opponent has a severe deficit in. Offense, <clears throat> all I do is just play morale. So it seems like his maybe in this case, if I had to be honest, I would probably just go with Mark of Zinch because by getting Mark of Zinch, you can get another more. You can you you can basically swing morale. You can basically get a get three morale. It, it's basically a three morale swing in your favor. So yeah, it seems like as if that's the best thing for for Chaos to do. There's not much that. Space Marines can do in order to counteract that. And if you take a look at Space, I mean, if you take a look at Space Marines, let's take a look at this. This basically allows you to swing for maybe three guns max. This one gives you three gun. This one gives you a three gun advantage. This one gives you a three gun advantage. But even then, a three gun advantage when you're ba when you're basically at a deficit of four d of four guns, it's just not going to do much, especially if it's already the second round. So, yeah, it definitely looks like as if Pharrell might definitely win this one again, 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 kids. Remember, just 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 if your opponent has really good anti tank weapons, you don't drive up all your tanks and then just get them shot down on the first day of an invasion, so to speak. You know, I mean, I mean. Again, I know I'm definitely very critical when I can see this, but I see this happen way too frequently to the point where I think where I I, I just feel like as if uh, I can't emphasize this enough. You just don't if you don't want to lose, just don't be too predictable. So, anyways, let's take a look and see what he does. So then it seems like his Mies Malt is getting hold the line, which gives him two defense and possibly gains him in a morale die. So that's basically at least a two morale swing in his favor, but then Mark of Zinch is a three morale swing in Pharrell's favor, so even in this combat round, Pharrell is technically gaining an additional has is gaining at least a plus one morale advantage against Space Marines. So let's take a look and see what he gets. There's a strong likelihood that he's gonna get more morale. But even if he does morale raise, I don't think Space Marines might actually win this combat. Yeah, so let's take a look at the morale. So it's basically 3, 5, 7, 8, 9 versus 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, yeah, I definitely do think that <clears throat> for Rao definitely has the upper hand at this point. So, he's going to gain another defense die. Oh, oh, he's going to gain some more morale, but I mean, he's got Mark of Zinch. Mark of Zinch is just basically the space marine. It, it, it's basically a net that towards the space marine. So if you have Mark of Zinch with Chaos United, there's just no way in hell that uh, you can basically outrace, <laughs> outrace um, space marines for morale, right? So, yeah, all right, so he's got Mark of Zinch, and I doubt that Pharrell is going to change any of the symbols into bulk guns anytime soon. I just think it's probably best just to play it safe and just not die to anything stupid, you know? Like, he's got too much morale now, and then as a result of this... Okay, and then finally, Pharrell just probably wants to play Mark of Corn, but he definitely. But Pharrell actually has a defender's advantage when it comes to Mark of Corn because of, because he gets to choose which die to spend, either the bulk gun or the morale die. So let's take a look and see what's going on. Hmm. Alrighty then. So with me small, he could probably play an ambush, but I mean the other three cards are just not terribly relevant at this point. So let's take a look. And in fact, if anything at all, yeah, if you're, yeah, this doesn't really look like as if it's something that Space Marines can actually win. So, huh. 
Yeah, honestly, at this point, there's really not much that Space Marines can do. The three gun swing is just not going to penetrate any of the defensive. And Chaos's defensive position. So, yeah, I mean, Pharrell already has four, and Space, and he probably knows that Space Marines can probably only swing three, so up to three, so there's really not much point, but I mean, well, he's going to play Fury of the Ultramar, and with Fury of the Ultramar, he, your opponent rerolls one die, and then you may reroll one defense. Uh, it's probably worth a gamble. It's probably worth a gamble. He could probably shift the defense into a morale, but even then, I just, yeah, I just don't, I just think it's just math, at this point, it's mathematically impossible for Space Marines to win this combat. So let's take a look, see what's happening. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this basically happens sometimes. I mean, sometimes players want to go into denial and then spend way too much time overthinking things simply because there's just not much they can do about it. So it's probably just going to trigger the second half of the ability. And on top of that, Pharrell is just going to reveal Mark of Corn. So he's probably just going to take a look at the computations and then see what's going to happen. So then Pharrell does in fact chuck away one morale die to gain three bolt guns. And one of the things that I always like to say is that is that under the right circumstances, offense offensive cards are basically morale swingers because even if you because especially if you're playing them on defense, right? Because if you're forcing an, a defense swing, then that's if you're basically killing additional units or even forcing a route, that's additional morale lost on your opponent's end. So Pharrell has two, five, seven, eight damage against Space Marines four damage. So that's actually going to result in two in a loss of in a net loss of five morale on <laughs> on the Space Marines part. So obviously, so clearly, Space Marines whole. Uh, so Space Marines definitely hold, and then so Chaos Marines hold, whereas Space Marines have to fold. So yeah, that's it. And then now with the advance order, it seems like as if the best possible decision that Pharrell could possibly make is to just, well, move all of the ships. Um, well, just move two of his ships, move a cultist. And then maybe I don't know. I think that's that that killing off that 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 space marine is probably not a bad idea. It definitely reinforces your your current hegemony, right? Your regional hegemony. So we have yet another combat. Man, I really like casting this game. This game is Honestly, the most castable part, one of the things I like about Forbidden Stars is, especially when there's two players, is the combats are very castable and watchable. So, yeah, let's take a look and see what he does. He could probably just play... Oh, okay, well, it doesn't look like he's got Mark of Corn. He could just get Mark of Zinch and then just force an additional die. That's probably what I would consider doing. Okay, but it seems like as if maybe Pharrell is just going for a Mark of Siege anyhow, and then just getting additional morale. That's probably not a bad idea. I mean, I, I guess if it was me, I probably would have opened up with, with Chaos United, because... It, with Chaos United. But, I mean, there is still the possibility that Space Marines could have those annoying additional defense gamers, right? So then he's got Mark of Zinch down, and then with Mark of Zinch, he's going to get a morale die. Let's take a look and see what morale die. Okay, he's probably just going to get... Okay, so Pharrell's just going to start building up defense. I think that's a pretty sensible decision. And then... And then Blessed Power Armor follows as a result of that, gaining him two defense dice, giving gaining him two defense. So at least for now, Space Marines definitely do have definitely blocked the four offense of Chaos this turn. But we're gonna have to take a look and see if he decides to convert any dice into defense. Probably not. Probably not. 
So, that out of the way, it seems like as if what Pharrell is planning on doing is he's... Who knows? It could be another Mark of Zinch. Could it be another Mark of Zinch? Or could it be a Chaos United? I mean, I think Chaos United is probably just the better, well, more well-rounded play that doesn't really have any noticeable weaknesses. So... I could probably definitely see him doing that. Okay, so it seems like as if as if Farrow is in fact opening up with a with a Chaos United, and then on the other hand, Me Smalt is getting cold line, basically throwing more rocks at Farrow's paper. So Farrow is getting Chaos United. He is going to gain, and then now it basically forces the Space Marine to either be routed. But I mean, if you get routed, especially when you take hold of line, then then. I think it's just strictly better just to get just to become routed anyways, right? So he's just gonna route the Yeah, he's probably gonna route it. He's probably gonna route. Yeah, he's definitely gonna route. And then I don't think Pharrell is going to place more dudes into this area, because that would be a little wasteful. So then of course, um he hold the space marine holds the line, gains two additional defense. And then now he can gain either one additional defense die or one Morale. It's got one, two, three, four, five. Defense against Pharrell's five offense. So, I don't know. He could possibly get an additional morale die. I mean, but even if he gets an additional morale die, I do think that... That... Pharrell is just going to just zinch him out of existence, you know? I mean, even if... Yeah, I mean, of course he's going to play Mark of Zinch. I think Mark of Zinch is probably just... the better play among the two options he has. Alright, well, I mean... Really don't think that there's really much that means. Yeah, you see, again, this is basically what I've what, what I've said a lot earlier. You get too much defense, and your opponent has lots of morale. You're basically just playing a losing hand from the onset. So, yeah, it's okay to have skew builds every now and then, but if you skew your builds too much, you're just going to you're you're basically just going to lose to someone who knows how to counter. So Farrow does in fact get a mark of Zinch, and he's just going to get more morale. He's going to turn it into offense, and then this one over here becomes hold the line. And with hold the line, he gets two additional defense tokens with... Perhaps another de defense or morale. So, yeah, of course, all the the Space Marine is basically forced to retreat to that area because that's the only legitimate area he can retreat. So, with material count, Pharrell has 3, 5, 8, 10. He's got 11 material yet again, whereas Mies Malt has just a piddly 3 material. So, with 5 material against 11... It's gonna. It's not gonna turn out to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, at this point, if I was playing as Space Marines, I would really just GG at this point. Uh, Red uh, Chaos has just established a very strong foothold, and again, Pharrell's just not that type of guy who throws games. Who throws games, right? So he. So given his strong regional hegemony in, in in the bottom right corner of the map. Just don't think that there's really much that Meesmall can really do, assuming that Pharrell plays rationally, which is just something that he naturally does because, well, he's Pharrell. So let's take a look and but let's take a look and see what happens. I mean at this point Pharrell could probably just go for additional level three upgrades, especially Death and Despair, or he could just just or maybe he could just Swarm using level two units, including some hell brutes. So at this point, it's not exactly. Yeah, honestly, at this point, I just don't really think it's winnable for space marines. It just seems like as if it's just a lost cause at this point. There's not really. <sighs> much that could be done. 
I mean, I guess maybe the Space Marines could probably try to try to um capture the two material planet and maybe go for a three material swing next turn, but even if if Space Marines manage to capture the 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 two material planet, the Chaos could just simply could just march straight into the into his first objective. So yeah, yeah, it seems like as if as if Farrow is just going for a standard for for a straight up macro game, but Mies Malt is just not just doesn't want to give up at this point. He's just holding on by a thread, although not much more th although not by much more than that. I mean he does have the opportunity to get a forge token, which does allow him to get more space marines and advanced units, but even then, Farrell could just get an even larger death ball. So let's take a look and see what he does. So Farrell has chosen to do a dominate. Has chosen to do a dominate in his home sector. And then Space Marines. And then Space Marines are planning on doing a dominate oh well that's pretty interesting he's planning on maybe doing a dominate that area he wants to do an advance still i am not very certain that this is oh wait he does have one unit over here so he, there is definitely a possibility that he could upgrade it into a land raider but again this is just this 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 seems a little bit Oh, seems a little bit despair-inducing. I mean, you know what? I think that maybe as a compromise, just to make, just to prevent the games from feeling like as if they're too much of a drag. I think that if one person has already won and there aren't too many interesting decisions to be made, made, I could probably speed up the areas of the game that are relatively that are sort of like a done deal at that point, and it's just all about steamrolling your opponent using. An inevitable sequence of pushes. I think maybe that might actually make the streams a little bit more castable and watchable because some Forbidden Stars players just don't surrender even when math is completely not on their side. So there's that. I mean, again, it's inevitable. I think that Farrow is definitely going to make that push here. I doubt that Space Marines have really much have all that much to to defend because the other thing i'd also like to mention is is this game is more or less decided at this point because the only up the addition the other upgrades that space Marines can get that are level uh, at level zero just won't be able to match the type of upgrades that chaos can get at level two or even at level three so even just the upgrade differential the upgrade disparity between chaos and space marines at levels at this level, it's 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 more than enough for me to predict what's going on. Okay, so it seems like as if Farrow is just getting an additional strategize, maybe he's planning on on just just cramming his combat deck with yet even more yummy juicy upgrades. Space yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's probably what I'll consider doing next time. I think that if the game is more or less decided at this point, but but someone is just too but the losing side is just a little bit too stubborn to concede, then I'll definitely consider just speeding up the video and then just so people can at least see the overall sequence of the game and then cast if there is in fact anything interesting at this point. So Yeah. Yeah, this not exactly sure what Space Marines can do. I mean, the only way I think Space Marines can actually win this game is by actually is for Farrow to just mess up, which is not likely at all. So it's yeah, it just feels like as if all this is gonna, all this is doing is just dragging out the game a little bit longer. Let's take a look, see how. Farrell ends this in an interesting fashion. Okay. So, it is Mies Malt's turn. He gets to place the final order token of the... of the... turn. 
Let's take a look and see what he does. Oh, no, 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 no. Can't be for real. Okay, so Pharrell decides to place a deploy order. Let's take a look and see what type of deploy he's going to do. Is it be a third city just to close out the game completely? Or could it be something else entirely different? Who knows? Who knows? Okay, so it looks like as if Pharrell is definitely placing a deploy order. And yeah. Hmm, now that I think of it, I think that maybe what Pharrell might plan on doing is maybe just getting his level two ships in order to to just lock down the map even further. <laughs> but again, it just seems like as if at this point in my cast, all I'm doing is just finding fancy ways or semi-fancy ways just to say how Pharrell might probably just steamroll the rest of the game. So, yeah, well, I guess we'll just have to take a look and see. It seems like as if at this point, it's, 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 there aren't really too many interesting decisions left to be made. I mean, I guess the Dominate Order could definitely help to some extent, but at this point, it's just... At this point, it just doesn't really seem like it's if there's... Even with the reinforcement tokens, uh, Pharrell still has a good combat deck. There's just... there's really not... I doubt that there's really too much that could really be done. Or or maybe Space Marines want to go for a strategize, but still, even with a strategize, having a deck full of level 0 combat cards versus a deck with level 2 combat cards is... Eh, it's not really... seems a little bit limp. It's not exactly something that could... pan out well. So... Yeah, well, I guess we're going to have to take a look at this. So, well, you know what? Maybe one thing I could probably do, especially when there aren't really that many interesting decisions to be made, is maybe I could probably just give a bit more commentary or feedback about about other areas. But it just seems it's, it's yeah, maybe I should just consider cutting out this portion of the game or just speeding it up immensely and then maybe just putting a bunch of like subtitles saying saying um saying saying math is not on his side and then just scrolling all the way down to the to the end game this is yeah this is eh, i mean i guess as a caster you should try to be professional and maybe not let your emotions get into this a little bit too much, but I mean, I just find that casting games beyond the point of no return just usually doesn't doesn't pan out well. The only... so, yeah. Well, let's take a look and see what Miss Malt does. See what he gets. Okay, so he's gonna place a strategize order, and then he's gonna place... and then now it is for Rao's turn to... go first see what he's going to do. So he's going to do a dominate order by collecting a cash token and forge token, which is really the only thing that he can do. Oh, he's going to place double cultists onto the one material planet. Okay. And now it's Mies Malt's turn. So the only thing he can do is do, is do either like a strategize or an advance order. But it seems like as if Chaos, let's take a look, Chaos, oh no, he has double order tokens there, so he can still do that. So he's going to do an advance order over here, possibly moving one ship, maybe moving one ship. Yeah, he looks like as if he's probably just going to move one ship, and then he's going to move his, he's going to start developing his pieces into the top half of the map. Maybe just to get a bit more income? I guess it's still better than nothing. So, huh, well, I guess maybe maybe economic advantages are not necessarily a done deal, but I mean, I still think Space Marines are kind of more or less bleeding out at this point. I guess Space Marines could probably upgrade the Scout into yet more Space Marines or the Space Marine into a tank. 
Although, yeah, not exactly sure what what what's necessarily gonna do. Okay, so Farrow does in fact go for a third city, which is which shouldn't be too surprising. And it seems like as if he's going to use Dread Ritual to perhaps build his level two. A uh, repulsive grand cruiser for a forge token and five material, and for three material. Sorry, it's for three material. It's for three material. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. It looks like as if the end is nigh. The uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, regardless of what Mies Malt does at this point, I think that I think I'm definitely correct. Farrow is just leveraging his late his his overwhelming tech advantage to just get more to, to just get better combat cards, which is not surprising at all. So let's take a look and see what Mies Malt plans on doing to counter this. Hmm. Alrighty then. And then now me and then now it's back to chaos. Oh wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Oh no no no. Oh right. I think I see why. It's because the thing is he wanted to he wanted to give uh Space Marines the opportunity to upgrade a unit. Okay, so then now the next thing that that Pharaoh's going to do is he's going to use a strategize, and by using a strategize, he is going to use favor of the dark gods to gain that to gain that, and then he of course he's picking death and despair. Yeah, I mean, regardless of however the game goes, I honestly just think that death and despair is just a much better card compared to Chaos Victorious. Chaos Victorious is actually just an overpriced white elephant version of even Chaos United. Chaos United does what Chaos Victorious is supposed to do, only way better. And then Chaos... Yeah, it's basically sort of just like a... Like, I like to think of 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 chaos unite of chaos victorious as basically like one of those futons, you know. It makes it makes both. It's basically either a really terrible couch or a really terrible bed, and it just seems like as if you could probably just get either one of them. But but you just never really want it in one package, right? So there's definitely that. Alrighty then. So it seems like as if Mies Malt is going to try to uh, try to maybe attack given either maybe the Chaos Marine or maybe the Cultist, perhaps. But, I mean, again, Pharrell has Chaos United, so he could just... So, regardless of which place he attacks, he could just shift some units. He could just teleport some units into that into that particular area. Okay, so... Seems like as if there's actually... An, oh, wait, he's actually bringing in a Space Marine. Okay, maybe there is definitely some hope for for... For, for me, for space marines. After all, I mean, five dice against two is winnable for the space marines. But, uh, but Pharrell has death and despair. If you have death and despair, you could literally, you, you could literally just, if he rolls even one morale die, he could probably just, just at least sack all of those cultists. Uh, sorry, all of the scouts. And so even if space marines do in fact manage to take over this planet, space marines is just still really down in terms of tempo and in terms of overall, overall material and uh, ma material in terms of the board, right? So let's take a look and see. Oh, 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 oh! It looks, oh, looks like as if I'm right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like as if this is how it's gonna go down. There's gonna be a death and despair, and then using death and despair, um, Pharrell could just wipe out four space, four space marines all at once. Oh my goodness gracious! This is definitely gonna. Oh man. Okay. Well, you know, I guess I should probably just cast battles just for the sake of. Just for the memes, you know? Like, I mean, I know that a lot of players have definitely attacked using, like, a huge swarm of level zero units with death and despair. So, it's, so, hey, who knows? At the very least, I'll definitely have 
something to 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 think about. Yeah, I don't think that ambush is actually going to do much. I mean, even if you do ambush, we're, we're going to be left with only, like, what, one space marine? And then once we're left with that one space marine, it's not going to do much. So he's going to... Re so then, Nismoth reveals <laughs> reveals an ambush for two guns, and then... And then, and then Pharrell just gets two, just gets two morale dice from Death and Despair. He's going to spend all four <laughs> dice just to slaughter the entire force of scouts. Uh, to slaughter just the entire force of scouts. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, sure, you might have killed my, sure, you might have killed both cultists, but you've lost for scouts and keep in mind that space that chaos has a significant macro advantage against space marines in the sense that they can get more cultists from their own from combat cards and anything that's or or from dread ritual right so yeah yeah good job man good job well i mean i mean the four scouts basically died so yeah, that was definitely <laughs> okay. Well, maybe I could probably at least clip that just for the memes. That was that was <laughs> okay. Well, at least if you're gonna go out, you might as well go out with a bang, right? Might as well go out with some memes as opposed to as opposed to just 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 losing completely, right? Alrighty then. So. Let's take a look and see where the next combat goes. Okay, so the Mies Malt is using a strategize order, and I don't really think it really matters at this point. His combat deck is just so limp. The, the combat deck is just so limp that I just don't think that anything that he does, that he picks, is just going to make much of a difference. So he does, in fact, end up choosing um, drop pods for Fury the Ultramar, but I mean, Again, at this point, getting drop pods is just basically you're you're just basically sending more space marines down into a suicide mission. So don't really see too much point in doing that. All right, so Pharrell can, is going to send. No, wait, why are you sending that ship there? You should probably just send the iconoclast there. Okay, so it seems like he's what Pharrell is trying to do is that he's just going to use. He's just going to do that just to. Earn some guys. So he's going to just send in a Chaos Marine, two cultists, and he could actually give up the. Yeah, he could actually just 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 shift the. Yeah, he yeah. I think that's probably the best comp, the, the best unit comp, right? I mean, you have seven dice against four, and then the cultist in the bottom left allows you to consolidate allows you to consolidate your forces for future battles. So okay, yeah. It seems like as if maybe he's just wanting. Oh. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Okay, so it turns out that Pharrell is just going to be attacking with Chaos Marine and two cultists against the, against the Bastion of the Space Marine. I think that's... I don't think... That, yeah, I think that's a sensible choice. I mean, at the very least, you will be able to gain some cultists. You will be able to at least maybe gain... You, you will be able to at least maybe transform the cultist into a chaos marine afterwards. Okay, so Mies Malt is, is putting in is putting in a reinforcement token, but I mean, Pharrell could just kill it using Death and Despair. I think Death and Despair might probably be the better option. Yeah, it's the better option of the two, because you can gain two morale dice and then just spend only one of them to to kill off the reinforcement, right? So in that case, it becomes a 1, 2, th one, two 3, uh, minus 1. I think it's a 4 morale swing. It's going to be a 4 morale swing in Chaos's favor. So then now Space Marines... Oh, okay, so it turns out that maybe... Okay, yeah, I think that actually makes a little bit more sense. It's probably better just to gain gain additional guns, because I think the morale might not necessarily be the most useful. And on top of... Okay, I think I see why Pharrell attacked with, with 
only five dice total. So in that case, he could take full advantage of death and despair already then. So then he's going to roll a drop pot assault, and then now he's going to get a defense. He can take a, he can spend a morale die to teleport a space marine from another rolled into the current rolled, although, yeah, it doesn't seem like as if, mm, I guess it could work, but I mean, keep in mind that Pharrell has a total bulk guns, has... 6 offense versus 3 defense, so you're basically just, uh, again, as I've said earlier, you're basically just, 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 just making them, just, just removing more, more guys from the board, and then just further compromising your position, because, yeah, with this, he's got 6 guns, he's got 6 guns against 1, against 3 defense, so as a result, he's one of them has to give, or maybe the Bastion might give. But still, either way, I don't really see much hope for Space Marines. I mean, even if the Space Marines do somehow stay, they're very likely to just lose the battle. And then as a result of that, the Space Marines would just have to die. The, 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 the Space Marines have nowhere to retreat, right? So it's going to take a Space Marine from that planet and then place it over here. But then... But then Jimmy the Cultist, who's a lot more effective now, he's definitely learned from his mistakes. He's just gonna shoot down the, he's just gonna shoot down the the very same space marine who just who just came down. So yeah, okay, so maybe Jimmy the Cultist did get a <laughs> became a little bit scatterbrained as usual. But then space marines they lose additional, they lose they they gotta lose one of them they gotta lose one of them. I mean. Either way, you can't retreat anywhere, so <laughs> it's not like as if you're, they're going to survive any further. And Chaos just has such a dominating lead on the dominating presence on the on the board that there's just no way in in. <sighs> Well, the Emperor has abandoned them. There's just no way the Emperor is saving them now. So, yeah, yeah, he's only got three defense. Gotta kill one thing. Gotta kill something. So, there you go. Alright, so the Space Marine is now Gonzo. So, there you have it. And then now, let's take a look. Okay, and it seems like as if Pharrell is just piling on the Death and Despair. It's just get more and more, just get more and more guns as a result of that. I mean, uh, Space Marines could try to hold the line, but at this point, it's it's just a little bit too... Seems a little bit too much. Okay, so Pharrell is probably just going to go with two more bolt guns. So it seems like as if what Pharrell is getting is like he's getting six guns, six, eight, ten guns, and then... Hold the line gives him two additional defense, gives him two additional defense, plus either a defense plus either a defense or a morale die, although I don't really think it really matters at this point. It seems like as if as if he's got ten bolt guns. He's got ten bolt guns against two, four, seven max. Well, hey, look, even at this point, he's still a space marine is still gonna die. That's just how. That's just how it works. That's just how it works. And I honestly don't think that. And the thing is, it doesn't really matter if for Rao's units get routed. They're just gonna stand right back up again because of Death and Despair's ability. So. Yeah, definitely doesn't really look very good for him. So, he's got an additional offense. Well, yeah, that's basically what I mean. I mean, even if... I mean, se I mean, 10 minus 7 is still 3, so he's still going to have to kill one of the units. So, yeah, this is how you play the game, kids. If you want to up your level, up your game, sometimes you're much better... Up. It's okay if your opponent takes their first objective. If they, take their first, if they take their first objective at the expense of ruining their economy, that's a trade that I'm totally willing to make, especially two players, right? Because, because once you take the first objective, the second objective, especially if you're playing as first player and you do the conga line deployment, it's actually pretty relatively easy to defend, so there's not really too much that you could really... Uh, so again, compromising your your economy as a especially 
as first player, it's just it's and to capture a, a, an objective is completely unwise because as you, as you can see, sometimes it's better just to take the more indirect route to life indirect route you know like sometimes i mean it's i mean i mean the problem i sometimes see with a lot of players who play forbidden stars is they're not doing it like how frodo should have went into mortar and cast off the ring he they're they're basically like a bunch of frodos who just try to charge in with the black gate into the black gates using only a twig as their weapon against all of these hordes of easterlings <laughs> easterlings all offense uh uh, all offense, wraith riders, and then they keep wondering why they lose. You know, sometimes you got to take the more sneaky, indirect path by going through. Uh, but and, and 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 yeah, you might probably have to face a shelob every now and then. But I would much rather. But that's obviously a much better option than just getting completely obliterated and trampled on by by an entire army of all of this, right? So again, guys, like this is another lesson that's super important to learn. You just can't, it's, I just think that you, you just can't, um, um, you just can't focus too much on, on being direct all the time. If you're just being direct all the time, then you're just, then, then that's a recipe. Then sometimes that, that, then you're just going to lose. Then you're just going to lose towards someone who knows how to play the more indirect game. So I definitely do think that while for, while economic strategies might definitely have, might definitely take some time for them to pay off. It's important not to, it's definitely important to just simply uh, it's definitely important to just know when indirect uh, game when indirect styles of play are just much more favorable right i mean now uh, because now if you take a look at this Mies malt is making only one additional material and with three material on a cash token oh i don't think he he sure as hell ain't gonna end going anywhere at this point whereas if you take a look at Pharrell's income he's got a total income of six seven nine eleven 12 so yeah so i mean once we have 13 income a uh, 12 income you're yeah he's just getting more stuff you know i mean for rao is just a, a really good example of of when you're ahead just get further ahead and and once when you're further ahead just get even more further ahead you don't need to throw games out of the blue in order to win things instantly so okay so then now for Rao has the option of moving some warp storms along or he could probably get incantation of zinch i mean incantation of zinch might not be a bad idea you could get additional cultists but oh okay so it seems like as if he's going to get blight of nurgle because being able to route additional units being able to route a unit is definitely something that can help for sure so yeah that's it as i've said earlier it's really just a matter of when pharaoh wins and not really just a matter of of if pharaoh wins because again this guy just doesn't throw any games whatsoever so it's it's definitely not gonna work too well it's definitely not gonna work too well although i will admit that maybe casting yeah maybe the you know what i think that from now on maybe i'll just edit the videos when people if people are still too stubborn to give up even if they're at a severe economic disadvantage i could probably just edit the videos and then just just leave out the really cool me memetic parts like like four guys dying to death and despair all at once that's the, the, that was definitely that's definitely at least clip worthy for sure right there so um yeah that was definitely very clip worthy indeed so yeah at this point i really just think <laughs> gg should be called i mean look here's the thing pharaoh is second player and a second player he can just do an advanced mother, and then there's just, and, and at this point, it's actually just mathematically impossible for Space Marines to defend the Relic Sword. And by mathematically impossible, I mean you'd have to be complete. You'd have to wish for complete miracles, right? So at this point, Pharrell could probably just 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 conquer this entire system, and then even if Space Marines do try to maybe 
rush across and do a beeline over here. Keep in mind that Farrow still has the advantage, has the second player advantage, so he could just make that beeline useless anyways by just revealing things at the correct times, right? And by by just revealing the order tokens at the correct times. So, yeah, honestly, no, I, it's literally just mathematically impossible. Please, Mies Malt, for everybody's sake, including my own sanity, I just want to, I, uh, I just want to call GG at this point. I mean, I mean, look, man, concessions are not problem are not as problematic as you think they are they happen all the time in gsl they happen all the time in two and freaking two player games and yet i honestly and yet one of the things that that that, that always befuddles me especially in the tabletop gaming com community even when it's just a competitive 1v1 game is like why well why, i just don't know why some people are just so averse towards concessions or towards conceding when 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 math is just completely against uh, against them it's it, it really makes no sense at this point i mean at this point because for Rao's second player he could literally just do an advanced mother as as his last action and there's nothing for Rao. Uh, sorry there's nothing me small could possibly do to end this end this game so so again again this is oh man well i i definitely got to get some video editing done this is pretty this is definitely this has definitely turned out to be a weirder game than normal. Okay, so Pharrell is probably just gonna get more dominating orders, but I mean honestly at this point, any type of order tokens that are being being placed at this point seem a little trivial. I mean the only thing Pharrell really has to do at this point to just guarantee a victory is just smother any type of advance order on top because he is second player after all. The and then smother this. And then it's just mathematically impossible for for Mies Malt to actually win. But hey, I'm not sure what I should be doing as a caster. It's it's maybe yeah, maybe just just cutting out or just fast forwarding through the least through the less interesting parts when a person when a player is just not willing to concede is just is just is uh it's probably the best compromise I can make at this point. So, yeah, but let's take a look at this. I mean, I, yeah, well, maybe I could probably just talk more about the meta strategic decisions that I think Mies Malt could, probably could have done. I honestly feel like is it, because, the, because I, I mean, I guess maybe Mies Malt could probably do like a double advance into the system, but even then, Farrell can easily block it, given that he's, that he's, second player that, that that he has a second player advantage right so then Farrell is just going to yeah i think he's probably just going to place an advance order on top and then i think that for the second advance for the second advance order he's obviously just going to place it over here and then this is just an unblockable advance so yeah either way no matter which way you slice or dice it um Mies malt is just ending up as as it's ending up as dog food for for Rao. he's he's ending up as a sacrifice for the dark dark uh, for the dank gods no matter what so yeah i mean even if he captures the second objective over here he's still going to lose based on based off of planetary control based off of Farrow's planetary control anyhow so it's not yeah yeah so at this point it's just mathematically impossible to actually win there's no real hope left for the rest of the galaxy. The galaxy will just will just be embroiled in an entire Well, this is the good ending in 40k where chaos just ruins the rest of humanity. So Yeah, yeah, I really don't think this is gonna pan out at all. Yeah. I call the game a lot earlier and I know that for Rao's not that type of guy who throws games easily, so he's so it was really just inevitable. It really was just a matter of when this would happen. So, yeah. I guess there's not really too much left to be done. Guess we're just gonna have to bide our time. Huh, well, I guess if I had to make a little bit more commentary, I definitely do think that maybe this is just a bit 
th this probably might not have been the best possible option, but if I was for Rao, I would probably, I, I usually like to get my, get my high-tech upgrades, especially by turn 4 or by turn 5, especially if, when I'm just that far ahead. If I'm just that far ahead, I'd rather just, just close out the game even earlier. But maybe, but, but then again, I mean, Pharrell knows how to take things patiently, take things in a chill fashion, right? So he's, so yeah, let's take a look and see what goes on. Could be a double deploy, for sure. Um... But if he does a double deploy, and he does a single advance over here, he can... Well, he could plausibly take this city, but even then, it's possible for, for Rao to just simply... Stomp his boots on the ground and then just deploy a massive army over here. I mean, either way, I just don't think that 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 Mies Malt is actually going to win this. So he's probably just going to do an advance order, and then he's definitely going to do an advance order over there, and then he's going to do, and then he knows that Mies Malt will probably do yet another order somewhere somehow, maybe just as a dominate or whatnot. But, I mean, even if he does a dominate, Pharrell could just simply spam a giant-ass army of of two forces. He can either place it on either... He can place it... He can spread them out among both the factory and among the city. So, at this point, it's just... It's, it's like, well, why would you do that? And on top of that, keep in mind that Pharrell also has Blight of Nurgle as a scheme, so there's not really much he can do. Yeah, maybe this is actually an interesting idea. I mean, I thought that he was that Pharrell was probably going to go for an advanced mother, but maybe this is probably the safer play anyways. I mean, if you deploy guys over here, you're not deploying guys over there, and on top of that, it's just, I mean, one measly little land raider just ain't going to do much, so of course... Pharrell performs a deploy smother, which I think is the correct choice. And then now let's take a look and see what's going on. So Mies Malt... Oh, Mies Malt can't even reveal any order tokens. So then the thing is, Space Marines, uh, Chaos Marines, he's just going to reveal uh, Blight of Nurgle just to route the Space Marines. So there goes Mies Malt's hope for any modicum of victory, what's uh, for any chance of victory whatsoever. The Space Marine is completely routed, there's nothing... Space Marines can do, and then, and then, of course, Pharrell is just going to reveal a deploy, so let's take a look and see what he gets. I mean, it, it kind of really doesn't really, it, it really doesn't matter what he gets at this point. He could just, he's going to get two cultists, a Chaos Marine, and a Chaos Marine. So he's got six, eight, ten, so that's basically a total of ten material. It's basically a total of 10 material, and he's probably just going to use Dread Ritual, so then that basically costs him 2 material, and then he's going to place... He's going to place it like so. He's probably going to deploy the Tall Brute. Okay, so he's probably just going to go for like a... like a... like an even Steven spread over here. I mean, Mies Ball has to reveal these two order tokens, but I doubt he could really do very much with them based upon his current positioning. The two order tokens are more or less about advances. Oh, oh, wait, 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 he could do that. He could actually do an unwavering resolve and then just, just, just rally a space marine. But still, the Mies Malt is just completely down an upgrade. So it's not like it's a, so, so regardless of what he tries to do, I just don't think he's going to do much. Okay, so at this point, it seems like he's maybe the best thing that, that Chaos can do is just... That's a strange option. If I had to be a little bit more honest, I would have maybe just tried to... Uh, that's strange. Uh, I actually would have just killed off the Space Marine, because if you kill off the Space Marine and you cut them, and you cut him off completely, there's just no way in, 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 in heaven on, on, or on Earth that in... There's just no way in the warp that you're ever going to be able to get that planet, you know? I mean, I actually would have just done that instead, but then now Mies Malt has an, has an opportunity to upgrade it into a land raider, but land raiders just don't really have any good combat procs, and at this 
Hmm, yeah, that seems like a bit of a misplay from Pharrell. I mean, I usually don't expect him to make these types of misplays, but oh well. But I think Pharrell's probably going to win anyhow. There's just no way that Mies Malt would be able to defend. Okay, so it's basically seven dice versus two. Yeah, yeah. there comes a point where if, where if your die differential and your upgrade differential is just that big, there's just not really much you can do in order to... Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, yes. Zinch can be very fickle at times. He's a very fickle god. You could probably just do, like, the Mark of Zinch. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you get to at least upgrade your cultist into a Chaos Marine, and then just shift the dice into something a little bit more usable, right? <laughs> so, I think Mark of Zinch is probably the better play in this case. I mean, there's no way that your opponent's gonna get that, so... Okay, but it seems like as if maybe he just wants to end this one for, once and for all, and say, you know what, screw it, man, I don't wanna... I don't... And yeah, well, Zine should be damned. I'm just going to use Mark, Mark of Corn. So, <laughs> yeah, that's basically what Pharrell says. He's just kill, kill, kill. So, let's just get, a, get some bolt guns. He's just going to remove that for some bolt guns. And then with an ambush, he gets two guns, but he can't be, but he's not able to proc the second half of the ability. So, now with that, he just routes a Chaos Marine, but I mean, like, who cares? The chaos and then the space marine just dies. So, yeah, I mean, I honestly think we should just call it at this point. I think that maybe the only misplay that I can see from Pharrell is not taking this planet, because if he took this planet, the uh, space marines would just not be able to trace a supply path in order to get back to the in order to get to the city. So he's gonna do an advance and he's probably just gonna make a desperate push anyways. So <laughs> let's take a look and see what what hilarity ensues. Okie dokie man. I think I'll probably just put this back. Just place it with Corral. Okay, alright now. Chuck the dice. Yeah, no, this is just mathematically impossible. Even if the there was another advance order token, there's just yeah, it's not gonna work. So then now he's got three two bulk guns against two bulk guns, so they're basically canceling each other out right now. <clears throat> and then now let's take a look and see what Pharrell gets. Yeah, you could probably just use uh, Chaos United and then just get more guys. It's probably one of the better options, I guess. Just get Chaos United and then see what happens afterwards. Alrighty. Okay, so yeah, I definitely I definitely call that one. He's definitely gonna get Chaos United. I yeah, because why not? Just get more Chaos Marines and then just see what you can do as a result of that. Yeah, maybe this was a misplay. I honestly would have just attacked the one lonesome Space Marine because even if if Me Small could do a deploy order afterwards, he wouldn't be able to advance. So then now he gets a Chaos United. He the opponent chooses to route one one unit, and then and then for Rao. Okay, so huh, that's interesting. So he's actually not really proccing the second. Okay, he is proccing the the second half of the ability. So three bulk guns, five bulk guns against three. That's enough to just route one Chaos Marine. And now it's the next round. And then for the next round, um, Chaos has parity in terms of shields. So he's probably going to play... Okay, so he's going to play a Mark of Zinch. I mean... I think that the most that the Space Marines can really gain at this point is probably just one morale die, so... I think this would definitely be the equilibrium play for sure. So he's got a drop pot of salt, but no Space Marines, so he's just going to roll one die. Ugh, pretty... And then I keep asking me. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. He get, Pharrell gets Mark of Zinch, and then using Mark of Zinch, there's... He's probably just going to... I'm assuming he's probably just going to replace the cultist with 
Space Marine, and he's probably deliberating on whether or not he can kill it or not. So he's got one, two, uh, two bulk guns. I mean, he could probably shift into offense, but he could probably just play it safe and just win by morale. So, okay, it seems like as if maybe Pharrell's not using the cultist into not tr not transmuting the cultist into a chaos marine. Okay, all right, well, that's a perfectly fair. Oh, wait, well, I guess he can't. He's just ran out of chaos marines. Well, I mean, there's like one chaos marine here. So, I guess I'll just do that. All right, so. Yeah. Don't think this is going to work. Don't think this is going to work. So, so I think that uh, Pharrell's just flexing over here, just showing that he's got two marks of Nurgles. He's just saying that, okay, man, doesn't matter what you do. You're still screwed either way. And he doesn't strategize, can't do a strategize. He does an advance. He does a dominate. And then as a... And, and here we go. So your final tournament winner. Uh, so you're the winner for the round for the third game of the round of sixteen is Pharrell, as well we probably should know by now. No rhyme intended. Okay then. I shall be ending off the stream and maybe just logging some results. So Let's take a look and see where the screen recording is.